Oh, dear. Hello and welcome to episode 28 of Oh Dear, presented by Bose Bar and Stage. It's uh, It's been a hot minute since you've heard from us, uh, an unexpected what, two month and a bit hiatus. Uh, you probably don't really care. On the off chance, you do care, which is just Dustin, uh, but not enough to be here tonight. Uh, we apologize. Life came at us pretty fast. Uh, so we took our summer vacation a little bit early, so we'll be recording throughout the summer instead this year. But we're happy to be here again back at Communal Creative Studios by Bose. Uh, kind of refreshed, I guess, and uh, somewhat ready to roll. As I mentioned, one person shy tonight. Dustin couldn't join us. We'll get into that in a little bit. But the rest of the gang is here. And unlike elementary school, where you go off for summer vacation and all the kids come back a couple inches taller, uh, that didn't happen. But still, nice to see you again, Kevin Walsh. <laughs> oh, wow. I had too much curveball, to think yeah, about. That, yeah. Wow. yeah, he's uh, even wearing lifts tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to say, at the end of our last episode, I think I was supposed to owe a cooking episode yeah, by we the gonna... time we recorded next. Oh, you're getting into that now. Uh, yeah, well, okay. so like it's been three months. I had tons of time. Yeah, I didn't do it. No. So, you're taking us out for dinner right after this. Perfect. Is what I'm hearing. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I guess the best way to describe this guy is the human version of a migraine. Ryan Lund, welcome <laughs> back. Yeah, I just never go away. That's, yeah. <laughs> is that where you're getting at? Yeah, there's a lot. Let's not pull it that thread, though. Just welcome back. Hey, man. How have you been? Hey, I've been I've been doing pretty good. Uh, it's uh, July, and the weather fucking sucks. Uh, but other than that, fantastic. Um, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to what the next two months have in store for me. It's going to be summer of Lund. Yeah. And uh, I got a couple golf trips planned I'm looking forward to, and all my uh, obligations. I had a really busy June. Every weekend is booked up. Um, had to go to an engagement party, had to go to a wedding, had to do a retirement party, and were any these were all his too. Yeah. His wedding, yeah. his retirement. It I was got, a busy June. I got engaged, married, and retired <laughs> all in the same month. So I could use a break. <laughs> no, but I just had it like everything is booked. Now my July is pretty much wide open. Yeah. So feeling feeling relaxed right now, which is nice. Yeah. And you can't see, but Lund actually showed us the motion of him pushing all his obligations away. They're done. Yeah. <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> That was him throwing them in the garbage. Yeah. Out of sight, out of mind. And now, how you seem very excited. Like you've been waiting two months to say fuck into a microphone again. Because you got it. You like right away. Yeah. No, I'm not a big swearer, but you put a microphone in front of me. I mean, fuck it. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, why not? And uh, no Dustin, which means... This, this actually, in hindsight, looks kind of bad that we never let Aaron sit at the table before, but it was just a space thing. But tonight, Aaron, welcome to the table and welcome back. I don't like this. I feel like the table has rules, whereas the couch was this lawless land where Andrew and I just do what we want. And now I've got to watch my microphone and my tapping. Yep. I can't be on my phone. So we'll see how this goes. All right. I'm so sorry it didn't work out, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the couch. <laughs> You're filling in for Dustin. So you have to mispronounce words. You have to answer a question with a personal fact that no one cares about. Like it's a it's a big responsibility. Oh, and you have to wish happy birthday to people that like the listeners don't care have about. No idea. Yeah. Honestly, I was born for this. I'm ready. Yeah. I'll talk about myself all night. Okay, she'll do yeah. pretty good then. <laughs> but over on the couch by himself, but still his favorite piece of real estate, Andrew Russell, welcome back. I guess you didn't take the hint after the last two months. We've actually been recording the whole time and didn't invite you. <laughs> and we didn't release anything just to throw you off the, the scent. <laughs> that hurts. That hurts deep. I'm already here alone. You already took Aaron away from me. So it's lonely over here. And then, and then you're just taking stabs at me. Yeah, welcome back. Well, and least, of course, <laughs> at least there's no short jokes. <laughs> yeah. We cannot make a short joke about you. There's two Kevin Walshes that make up you, basically. So, you know what? Send us some tall jokes, everyone. We need some tall jokes. Because, like, there aren't any. How's the air up yeah. there? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm sure we can... Next yeah. episode. Either way, Andrew, welcome back and happy to be back here hanging out with just Riley tonight. Ryan is, where is he tonight? He's like tour, touring with the Trues or something crazy. And then he's playing with one bad son. Like it's crazy. And Riley too, you've been absolutely ridiculously busy with Bo. So thank you for having us. Uh, it's great to be back and we'll see, uh, we'll, we'll see if anyone still cares about us because that was, uh, we were kind of pushing it. Before we stopped for a couple months. Yeah, I mean, a two-month hiatus is uh, is like an eternity in the podcast world. 
And now with everything open back up, there's so much more to do. So it's going to be a real experiment to see how many yeah. listens we get and how many people still give a shit. So if you're listening right now, basically like get a life yeah. is what we're saying. Yeah. Like get a the, job, get, out, get a life, move out of your parents' basement, <laughs> get your shit together. But thank you so much for listening. <laughs> <laughs> but lots, lots to get to in this episode. Obviously, lots to catch up on that we'll do in a bit. Our interview today is something that was a long time coming, finally made it happen. Patrick Bateman and Peter Michaels from the Road the Stage podcast, which is really the flagship podcast of Communal Creative Studios. Uh, and one thing we haven't done enough of, I think, on this podcast is really dive into Red Deer's music scene. And that's, of course, because those guys do it so well. But it's going to be a great chance, a little bit of a crowd crossover you know the two groups that basically use this space the most and uh yeah lots lots to get to in that so i won't spoil anything uh so first let's get to for the first time in a while so lots to be glad about in the glad game the glad game is brought to you by louis corvo of warren sinclair llp a central alberta law firm dedicated to helping all its clients achieve their business and personal goals learn more at warrensinclair.com again yeah you nailed it no rust are we still not supposed to comment on Aaron's yeah, ad reads? What, what the are you? Hell, man. <laughs> I thought it was a little fast, personally. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, Coming from no, marbles this. over there. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot, Tad Emmett. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Ked. <laughs> oh, yeah, Ked. For some reason, I thought it was Tad. That's, oh, that's, that's from that 70s long. show. Yeah, Tad Nugent. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, there's a lot to be glad about. There's so much that has happened the last couple months. Uh, we won't touch on anything like personally with us because, well, we've got lots of time for that later. But I think we'll just, just to start off. COVID's not over. We know it's not over. We still have a, a responsibility and have to be careful, but things are opening up. You know, the landscape is changing again. Uh, and I think it's great. Uh, we'll touch on it in the interview about Bose and all the concerts happening, but just seeing all these uh, canceled events over the last two years be back, lots of uh, sports and everything. It's just, I think it's great for the community and especially for a lot of businesses who have had to pivot. Uh, I can't do your charity golf tournaments, all of that type of stuff. So very generic thing for the Glad game that I think everyone feels but i still think it's worth talking about speaking of charity golf tournaments we had a very successful first annual piper creek optimist club golf tournament uh, out at alberta springs uh beginning of june we were supposed to pour rain all day it didn't um but yeah we had we had 16 good teams out there and raised a lot of money and everyone had a great time and came back to bows to, to watch the others game that night and so i guess that's the second thing i'll touch on the last two months have been a really exciting uh playoff hockey playoff year for for uh, most Albertans with both Calgary and Edmonton in the, in the run. And obviously that Battle of Alberta series was, was nuts. So uh, I'm sure I'm not alone when I say I spend a lot of my evenings watching, watching hockey. Now that that's over, I guess I can get go outside and summer of Lund, summer of Lund. So um, yeah, I'm just glad for, for life. Yeah, well, good. And, you know, and going back to the golf tournament, Lund, you were the head of that committee and I think went better than we could have imagined. The two of us and Aaron got to sit on a hole all day, raise some money and just kind of chirp people. But I know for Aaron, the day may, maybe wasn't what it was cracked up to be because our, our relationship changed forever that day. You know, I'm actually shocked it took this long for me to see your butt. <laughs> Um, it, was just the, it was just a little cleave. Like, it was just yeah, a peekaboo. It, it was a top a half. Big, it was a big cleave. I think it was more than you realized. <laughs> Probably, yeah. but But it was for a good cause, <laughs> and people paid to see it. Wow. So, they didn't know they were going to see yeah. it, but Fair. I guess for context, we were trying to throw people off while they were hitting, and I went to tee up the ball and decided I'm not showing enough butt crack, but realized... I'm facing directly at Aaron, who has not seen my butt crack before, and I don't think it was on her bucket list. So yeah. I apologize for that. And that's exactly why we haven't done the podcast in two months. Aaron <laughs> wouldn't even come anywhere near us. Yeah, mystery's over. The romance is dead. <laughs> Listen, everybody's 2022 bingo card's a little bit wild. I may not have had that on there, but like I'll just that'll be the free the free spot <laughs> yeah. in the center. Yeah, I think you guys alluded to it. You know, with concerts being back. So just recently, I was able to go to Garth Brooks when he was in Edmonton. So that was just incredible being with 60,000 people. Definitely felt like the pre pandemic days. And then uh, I was also lucky enough to get to go to a game on the second round up in Edmonton. So third round. And it was just 
the excitement of everybody, both at the, just the concert and, and at the game. Um, it's just great to feel like normal again. So yeah, it's been a really great start to the summer, I'd say for everybody. Do you guys have any fear of, do you, do you remember, yes. do you remember <laughs> last year, best summer ever? Yeah. And how excited everyone was to start this summer. Do you guys have any uh, hesitation, trepidation, any type of other Asian about us repeating last year where there is a big kind of pullback and, and things do kind of get shitty again? So just to clarify, we're out of the glad game now then. This is the, <laughs> yeah, this is this the, is the, this is the real game. This, this is, is the, uh, <laughs> Yeah. The sobering reality game. Yeah. That, that's a great question. I think, though, there was so, like, they were trying too hard last summer yeah. to make it a thing and try and push the economy back to where it needed to be. I uh, kind of get why they did it, but this year it's just kind of like it's just happening right. naturally, right? And people are finding their own. Lots of people still aren't comfortable going out and doing what they, they uh, want to do quite yet, and that's fine too. But no, I think, and now I think we're ready for anything. After last year, we realized not to get our hopes up too high and just. What are we? Yeah, I was just stretching. Oh, <laughs> I Lund's thought, throwing fireballs. Yeah, I thought, I, well, <laughs> Lund was throwing fireballs. I thought Kevin was trying to signal something. I don't know. But what was I saying? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Got me. Uh, no, I, I'd love to answer your question. I, I'm not worried because it's at this point, it's like whatever happens, happens. And I'm just making sure to enjoy what I can while I can. That's a good way. That's a good way to look at it. That's what next. the summer of Lund brought to you by the summer of Ted is I think all I about. I need a sponsor for the summer of Lund. Ooh. Well, we'll talk to our sponsors after this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I want my summer to be sponsored. <laughs> well, I want some free shit. <laughs> well, I think since we're already doing it, uh, and this is my new favorite sound effect, we might as well move into a, a catch up segment now and just go in to shooting the breeze. <laughs> bang, 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 bang. Shooting the Breeze is brought to you by Hung Yuk Ukrainian Kitchen. Family owned and operated, Hung Yuk serves fresh, locally sourced, authentic Ukrainian and Hungarian fine foods for dine in or take out, including the pierogi poutine, a unique dish combining Ukrainian favorite with a Canadian classic. Visit them now on Thorburn Ave or head to hungyuk.com for more information. All right, so lots to catch up on. Again, uh, this two-month hiatus kind of came out of nowhere, uh, which we can we can cover all the different things. But I think first off, we have to start uh, addressing why Dustin isn't here. Um, and a big congratulations, though. He's at home taking care of a, what, two-week, three-week-old baby boy. The first oh dear baby, technically, too, right? The first baby born while oh dear We're taking is a credit. Thing. We're taking credit for it, yeah. But uh, so congratulations, Dustin. We... Uh, we, we still think you should be here, but whatever you get, everybody gets one. Uh, first episode, though, like we're almost two years in, almost 30 episodes in. First time uh, not having w- one of us here. And if it goes great, he might not be invited back. So, yeah, things are moving real smooth tonight. So yeah. we might have to meet, have a meeting after this. Or we'll make him sit on the couch next time. <laughs> yeah, or just. Yeah. Hey, not, whoa. Not, not <laughs> you, you know this what? is a privilege. And an honor to sit on the couch, right, Aaron? It's true. Like I said, this table makes me nervous. So, Dustin, maybe... Yeah, we'll see what happens in the future of Dustin, but congratulations nonetheless. Uh, and we were trying to get some episodes in before that. And, uh, you know, for me, got busy at work. And then... Um, Teddy, you started a new job. Yes. So I was finishing up my old job, which was like 70, 80 hour days, rolling into a new job, which... Uh, you worked 80 hours a day? Ted, no, that's, that's I'm much. still tired. Oh. 80 hour weeks. <laughs> wow. Nuts. Someone else lead this podcast. <laughs> and I suck. And, hey, and guess what I do for a living now is I talk every day. Yeah, but uh, Teddy, to be fair, all you say is the weather. It is, yes, mostly. And That's to, be, true. to be even more and fair, I'm wrong you get it most wrong of the time. most of the time. <laughs> hey, I don't get it wrong. I just, what I read ends up being wrong. Yeah. But uh, no, I started a new job at 106.7 Rewind Radio, uh, which is incredible. Uh, I think I do have this podcast to thank for it, uh, which is what I wanted to take this opportunity to to do because yeah you know we work hard on it put in a lot of time but uh for me to be out of radio for seven years and then be able to to land a morning show job here in red deer uh it really comes back to the support we've seen in the community for this podcast uh for us uh just in general uh so thank you everyone who does listen follow us uh it was a huge huge reason why i was able to uh to land this job and it's been incredible i didn't think i'd 
ever be back in radio just because I was out of it for so long. So thank you, everyone. Um, and if you'd, hey, if you listen and you don't like me, uh, you got yourself to blame that's, for putting me there in the first place. I mean, that's that's more than fair. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If, if, it's, if that's the best thing that comes out of this, that's awesome. Yeah, that's... Exactly. So like it, it made it all worth it to be. Yeah. To be and it was already too, yeah. is the thing. And it was just a really, really nice offshoot of it, which uh, it shows, goes to show though that nothing that you do and put effort into truly is for nothing. I have a blanket I knit that would disagree with you. It's very bad and we'll never see the light of day. Uh, but is it going to keep anybody warm? No, it's got lots of holes in it. <laughs> Well, so what the heck are you doing? I'm just saying the theory doesn't hold. But what about like a warm sleeper like me who might need the whole, like I'm saying that you could find a use for it. We're very proud of you, Ted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I appreciate it. And again, you know, uh, like I said, for, for all of you here and Dustin, the, the time you put into this with me, like I said, it wasn't really a thought. It wasn't why I was doing the podcast. Uh, I just ended up being a perfect fit. And I guess I uh, never really talked about my old job, uh, but I'm also going to take the opportunity to talk about it a bit because at the Hockey Alberta, uh, it feels really good to leave a job feeling great about what you've done. Uh, it truly changed my life. I met Dustin there, which is how I met you guys. Uh, I met Aaron there and the athletes. So uh, great job there. And it's just, uh, that is why I've kind of been, we've been MIA the two months. I'll put 99% of that on me, but it's just been the tradition in that. But uh, man, I, I haven't felt this good in years. So I uh, needed the break. Uh, now coming into it, feeling good. Hey, you look good too, man. Yeah. It's good to hear that everything's going great. Yeah. And yeah. what about everyone? Everyone else got to have a couple couple updates too. Oh, man. I don't I don't have any. Like You, you, you pushed your responsibilities yeah, aside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was my update. I just moved all my responsibilities and obligations aside until September. So, uh, get at me at... Uh, <laughs> Fuck! What is my Instagram handle? <laughs> RD London. I've been 86? posting. I've, I've uh, that's doubled. his email. <laughs> I think uh, it's his. Oh, okay. Yeah, it might be both. Uh, I've been. Po- I think I'm up to five, maybe six yeah. Instagram posts now. So I've been on fire. <laughs> I've got to be media. in a couple of them too. Like, yeah. So how popping have your DMs been? Like the slides must you know be what? nonstop. No, they, they, I haven't really. I don't really do the slides too much. <laughs> Riley, what the fuck? We're recording here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Spooky haunted house oh door God. noises. Could that door get any louder? Anyway, no. Uh, so, my DMs are wide open. Slide in, slide out, however you want to do it. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to posting my seventh Instagram post like pretty soon, probably in July. So, stay tuned for that. <laughs> well, I just find it hilarious how you made such a big deal for Riley entering when you're talking about your number of Instagram posts. Yeah. But, yeah, well, thank you. Like, show a little respect, Riley. Lund, I just checked. You actually currently have seven. Oh, so, wow. Oh, shit. Get it together, okay? Hey, well, stay tuned for my eighth Instagram post. Dude, we'll post it later tonight. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. why we've been off for two months as Lund's been focusing on his social media <laughs> career. And I uh, broke the internet for a while, so no one could do anything. I did, yeah. And when I posted that seventh one, like, shit blew up. <laughs> Shit got crazy. So, like, hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to all you little people that I've stepped on along the way to get this popular. <laughs> um, but these next two months are going to just be wild. So, get at me in September, I guess. <laughs> get at me when September ends. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's not even wake you up. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm new to this social yeah, media game. More than three words. Someone else talk now, yeah. please. Okay. Yeah. So, Teddy, you you uh, you inspired me with your job change, and so I had been doing some thinking, and so I decided to make a bit of a career change myself. So, um, we're recording on June 30th, and today was my last day at my job, so I start a new one on July 18th. So. Yeah, I'm just excited for the next chapter here. I'm glad. I'm glad too. You you told me that the other day, and uh, I'm glad you you brought it up because it's uh, a lot happened in two months. It's nice to celebrate what's going on in everyone's life. So congratulations, and uh, it's fun. We're all growing together. Man, I it's, get a it's new so job fun too now. Everyone else has got a new job from the podcast. Yeah, I uh, start a new job on. It'll be Tuesday as well. So making big moves and things are happening. It's kind of a wild year. So. Well, Andrew, how was your two months? We know you have the, the same job and you're continuing to do it so well. <laughs> yeah. We know you're just selling houses. Yeah. Don't get into the houses. housing market because that's later in the show. But how is it? Forget about Andrew Russell, the realtor. How is Andrew Russell, the very tall person? Pretty good. Pretty good. 
I don't know why I expected any more than that. And that's why he's on the couch. (laughs) Doesn't it feel good to be at the table and just, Aaron, and just look down like, oh, the couch people. Look how far far you've come, Aaron. You used to be over there. She she remembers her roots. I'm not here for the discrimination of the couch people. We are a proud and texting people who don't have to worry about the rules of the table. That's right, Aaron. Represent. I'll forgive you for moving over. I mean, you technically aren't supposed to be texting on the couch i just don't really look it's over a there lawless enough, land yeah i guess it's the time i catch up on my social media and ryan lund's seven instagram posts yeah. so <laughs> yeah you need a lot of time for that but that's okay everyone's caught up on the last few months it, again it sounds like we've all been equally as busy yes yeah and dustin had a baby yeah so we're good yeah Dustin had to be dustin put on a great charity golf tournament too uh, in June that uh, we'll give him a shout out for. I think we all know Dustin is the organizer, the party planner, so we knew he'd do a great job. Uh, but still, props, Dustin. And uh, no, we are not texting you after we record tonight to come join us for beers because that's like calling in sick to work and then showing up for the free work lunch or that for day. The, yeah, the free pizza party. Yes. No, you're yeah. not getting any of these. No, pineapples. but we are going to have a pizza party. Oh, yeah. We yeah. should have for sure. Oh, yeah. 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 Dustin's not invited. Andrew, you're invited. Riley, you're invited, even though you don't want to hang out with us at all do you just want to slam doors and tell us to get the hell out uh but that there's the update on the last two months so thank you if anyone actually was sad or whatever that we didn't record the last two months we apologize but i think we're all back at it feeling better than ever sometimes you just need that little bit of a a mental break so still a lot of other things to talk about though lots of fun stuff coming up uh and then another another big event this is coming up in august so you do have lots of time uh this is something uh for Lund, Walsh, and I, we took part in last year. Very excited again um, that a, a lot of our close friends put on is the PAP Foundation Golf Tournament. That's coming up August 20th at Alberta Springs. Uh, so that one's $200 a person. It's a two-person scramble. You get your golf, drinks, and food on the course, a meal. That was one of the most fun golf tournaments I've ever been a part of, and they still have some space. Uh, I highly, highly recommend. Uh, and such a great cause, too. You know, last year was the first one, and, and I knew... Brandon Papp, um, Lundy, you did too. And, you know, a group of his close friends put this together for the first year last year. And and it was really going towards a great cause, which was the Mental Health Association. Um, I'm sure they have, and I know they have similar causes this year, including scholarships and all that kind of stuff that they want to fund. But that was one of the most, it was definitely the most impressive golf tournament I've seen for only being you know, it's first year or even within the first couple of years for some of the other ones I've been to. What there was for holes in terms of drink holes and food holes and all that kind of stuff. I was kind of blown away, to be honest. So, so for me, it was the the amount of volunteers they had. They yeah. Had, I don't know what the number was, but everyone was wearing those green volunteer shirts. And, and obviously, a lot of those volunteers knew Brandon and were um, doing whatever they could whatever they could to to support the tournament and, and give back and um I, to me that's what made the tournament an overwhelming yeah. success and one of the most memorable golf tournaments i've been to ever yeah, yeah. And, and no butt cracks yeah. we think uh you yeah, didn't it, see any yeah i didn't see any butt cracks that, that day which which is what you want in a golf tournament i saw a few that is a great tournament really looking forward to that and uh what a great august for us because we have the chubs in early august and then that on august 20th so again you can go to pap foundation it's p-a-p-p foundation.ca and uh, register your team and if you want to sponsor too uh, whether you want to golf or not uh, always looking for sponsors there so uh, one other thing coming up and this is uh, I'm going to be a judge for this so I want to talk about it and uh, but for the first time since 2019 uh, Rewind Radio and Big 105 are doing a chili cook-off to oh, kick off yeah. Westerner Days they're looking for teams for that you can go to uh, 1067 rewindradio.ca to register your team basically it's anything you want right you they're looking for most unique chili. Are we doing more fireballs over there? Because that's a little more appropriate chili, for, yeah. for the Spicy chili. chili. Uh, but the point is, is I have to be a judge. But I, I think you guys, I think especially with Lund, you could win most ingre- most unique ingredient just by having Lund on your team for that. Oh, you want us to submit a, a chili? I think you should, yeah. You should think I would, about yeah, it. I, I, would, I would be part of a team. I, I don't have a lot of experience. Yeah, if only, we knew, if only we knew a chef named Phil, you could... Hmm. team up with. What do you think Phil's up to now? It's been a few months. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's reach out to Phil. 
But if, if you are interested in that, you can show up on July 21st and just sample the chili or you can enter team. That one is, it's all for the Kidney Foundation. So it's a, a great cause there. I used to go to it all the time just to eat the chili. Uh, it's kind of like a, a nice kickoff to Westerner Day. So you can go have your pancake breakfast on the Thursday, chili for lunch, and then not be in a closed room with anyone for at least 24 hours. Yeah, usually it's just all for the kids. This is all for the kidneys. So it's a nice, nice change of pace. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good, guys. Yeah, that was pretty good. We're going to take another two months yeah. off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can't top that. Yeah, that's that's good. done. Yeah. End the podcast. Yeah, 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 that's over. No, we, we do have an interview to get to. We usually get to it a little bit early, but of course... Uh, I, we've been the MIA for so long, people probably don't remember how this show goes or care, so I don't need to remind them. But there's yeah, a little I'm, bit of I'm context. One of them. Yeah, yeah. So a little bit of context we had to get out of the way before the interview. So without further ado, here we go. Our conversation with Patrick Bateman and Peter Michaels from The Road the Stage. All right, well, two Red Deer podcast superpowers combined here as we're joined by Patrick Bateman and Peter Michaels of The Road the Stage, which is the flagship podcast of Communal Creative Studios, really the reason that this this whole studio was built. So, guys, thanks for being here and uh, thanks for letting us uh, use your space when you're not. If, if we're superpowers, let's change it to mega powers. Who's yeah. Hulk Hogan and who's Macho Man? I think we'll, uh, we'll be Hulk. <laughs> we'll be the, we'll be Hulk Hogan. Ooh, yeah, okay. yeah, you guys can be much. Is it Randy? Is that his name? Randy, 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 Randy Savage. Savage. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. There's definitely more temper tantrums probably in our podcast <laughs> than yours. So I think that makes. Perfect <laughs> Is that Hulk sense. Hogan then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Also yeah. known as Ted Emmett. Yeah. <laughs> How does the Ultimate Warrior fit into that then? Was he not a mega power? I don't think he ever was a mega power. But I mean, you want to talk about the fits? That's yeah. That's the man right huh. there. Yeah. I don't mm. think he ever was a mega power. All right. So the Hulk Hogan and the Macho Man Randy Savages of the podcast world in Red Deer are here, uh, guys. Thanks for being here again uh you know what you're here a lot but uh just talk a bit about the podcast i think you guys what as of recording this right now like 63 episodes in, yep. in just over a year so pretty incredible a lot more than us yeah well we do i remember teddy when we first started our podcast you are probably around this time of year you were like i give you until september before you're do, <laughs> releasing every two weeks <laughs> i did say that yeah and uh, here we are, still still haven't met your expectations. We've so. missed just one week, and that was due to appendicitis. Oh, yeah. On, uh, Do we miss a full rise. week, I though? think we missed one. I think there was just one episode that didn't get released. I did notice Because of that, that uh, yeah. appendix. I know, and like the world shut down. The emails flooded in. Yeah. It was just constant social media messages. Where, where the hell did you guys, guys go? They yeah. didn't let you record in the hospital. <laughs> we <laughs> well, you tried. Yeah. Um, Ryan didn't want us to do that. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Well, his appendix was bursting. <laughs> oh, it was his. It yeah. Was his. Oh, that was one of your yeah. years. Like, we need you. You're our producer. Yeah. And uh, doctors are like, there's only, you're only allowed one person in here at a time. Yeah. There were three, it was a mess. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And we, we missed like two and a half months and no one said a thing. So I guess that's, <laughs> that's a, well, what's a, what's a way less popular wrestler? Cause that's probably who we are in that case. Coco beware. Yeah. I've never heard of him. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, there yeah. we go. All right. That, that would be us, I guess. <laughs> How do you guys do it every week? We were doing it once every two or three weeks for, for quite a while there. And that was that was pretty daunting. How many have we done this week? We did three, three this week. Three this week? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Yeah. Well, summer vacations are popping up. Uh, Pete's going to go on some sort of exodus for the next three weeks. Oh, where are you going? This is, uh, this is it. This is my swan song before I take off on holidays. So yeah. Oh, wow. Terrible that. swan song. <laughs> 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 this is the last Send thing I'll ever do in Red Deer, Alberta. Uh, we got a little road trip to Southern California for a couple of weeks. Just to find the most expensive gas on the planet, I think, is what we're trying to do because <laughs> we're driving. So, I hear it's around eight bucks a gallon. My sister came in from BC this this past week and was like, oh my God, it's so cheap here, buck <laughs> ninety. Yeah. And then my cousin came in from Ontario and I guess it's ridiculous out in Ontario right now. So, they're like the two highest parts in, in Canada. Okay, yeah, I'm sure west coast west coast usa it's going to be outrageous so maybe just just buy a tesla or buy a yeah yeah get i don't a think prius. you can get find a prius them. while you're down there yeah. you can't find electric vehicles anymore that's all the time we have guys so thanks for <laughs> coming and talking about your podcast no peter actually i'm gonna have a bit of a, an easy couple weeks too because my new boss is on holidays for a few weeks so i'll probably mail it in and have Lucky a bit of a you. staycation so yeah. that guy the radio asshole. isn't on during these next few weeks well, he probably, he doesn't listen anymore. <laughs> I, I used to, he also used to be my boss and uh, yeah, no, he will be up 
very early. Would I ever send messages while I was gone, though? But you'll be up at 5 a.m. California time to listen to their 6 a.m. show. Is that yeah, how it works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 They're making odd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah. definitely sleep with one eye open. So I, I will definitely be. <laughs> so, for those of you who didn't get it, Peter is actually Ted's new boss. I just found that out. Yeah, I know. I could tell. Yeah, after, okay. yeah yes. I could tell Kevin didn't know. Yeah, and I was like, totally. wondering. I can now see the sympathy. I can, like, you're uh, like, honestly, just in the eyes now, I can just see a much more sympathetic glance coming my way. Yeah, it's bold for you to hang out with him in this context before your probation is over. I know. I was thinking about that because we've been trying to do this interview. Like, Pat, you and I have been talking about this for a year and that's how good we are at following up on stuff. And I thought coming back in summer, uh, you know, would be a, a good time because you guys are, are rolling so hard and Bose has so many shows. It seems like yeah, it's crazy. every second day right now, Bose is having a show and you guys are at all those shows too. So that's got to be uh, obviously for the nature of your podcast and just your passion for music. It has to be a, a great time right now for you guys. Yeah. And honestly, like even through the pandemic, when the shows weren't happening, you know, bands were kind of sitting around and waiting for things to get going back on the road again. So, you know, everybody had tons of time to talk. So it's actually been great even pre getting things up and running again yeah new music still came out in the last <laughs> two years so we had lots of guests that wanted to talk about that stuff and yeah it's been great do you guys uh do you guys think you would have started this podcast if it weren't for the pandemic yes for sure this yeah. was in the works prior prior to yeah i would say so yeah i mean it was definitely a loose idea for a while and mostly just because bose is such an incredible ecosystem for not just touring bands but bands that deserve a lot more exposure that aren't getting it in traditional media platforms uh in some of the cases so it was definitely something that we we wanted to do um but i guess it didn't yeah we started a year and a half ago so it was halfway through the pandemic right yeah and then i think a lot of it uh came from the fact too that you know patrick and i were working for a radio station that was yeah. in a certain format that was supporting new music and playing new music and then the powers of b switched that up and, and went to you know a full-on gold-based library and we still are very passionate about supporting new music and wanting to right. support those artists so we thought well, all right well nobody's doing a podcast yeah right? no one no one no one's doing <laughs> no a million million, million no music podcasts out there no one's doing a podcast in red deer yeah <laughs> yeah yours definitely the idea started before ours and ours was a, a night out on walsh's birthday where we had too many beers and decided <laughs> we'll do it so we for, just, we decided we sounded fantastic we had so yeah, many good like, ideas oh, these, <laughs> well, people, people have to hear us how, how right many now. night outs include a you know we should we should do a podcast yeah. people and it never happens you guys did it that's We're, true and, and to be fair teddy talked about it for probably four or five years. of those <laughs> no, just just of those nights out at the pub or whatever, he'd bring it up, and then it was like the fifth one where we were like, okay, we kind of just said, I'm gonna sit you down, and I'm just gonna press record and just try and talk. Yeah, we had a we had a trial run, and I've never listened back to the tapes. It was but I've, I've heard there. I don't delete anything. I deleted. They were. It, it was. I think we did have too much to drink. I, it, like that night was so much fun though, just because we were just experimenting on on how to do it. And and did you, any of you guys have like pre, like obviously Ted had some radio background at that time, but nobody else had any like public speaking experience. I had public speaking through. Yeah, work. well, Walsh was yeah, like I'm an, an accountant, accountant who okay. is a public speaker, which yeah. is very different from having like. I'm not. The, Cool. That's what he's, <laughs> well, not even that, but yeah, no, these guys have been doing this for well, almost two years. I still don't think they have any experience, like especially Lund. I, <laughs> yeah. Does not learn any time he's here. But for you guys, obviously, <laughs> I'm just, gonna, I'm not even going to let him have a rebuttal on that one. For you two guys, right? Again, having the radio background and stuff, there's so many people who want to do the podcast, but being on radio still too, right? Was that, uh, was that a little different? You find like, uh, I haven't even I haven't done a podcast yet since starting again on the radio, so I don't know. Is it different juggling back and forth, kind of between the two mediums, because they're very similar and very different too at the same time? Well, like we had talked about a little earlier as well, we're used to doing you know on on the radio, it's always about moving forward yeah. and getting to the next whatever. So it's all short. And with those interviews that we would do on the radio, they were, were fine. But I mean, by the time you talked to an artist about their new album or new single, the reason the, they're in town, the reason they're in town. Yeah the tour that they're on, that was pretty much all the time you had. So you really never got to dig in and get to know these people. Or yeah. if you did, it was never broadcast. Yeah, yeah, you'd We've have had to chop it of down. we hour long conversations with musicians in the last few years and through Pete's long career, but most of it that never makes it to tape, never right? makes it there. So yeah, this was a great way to just, uh, again, get to know these artists a little bit more as people. And again, introduce that to, you know, the listening audience who will hopefully get 
a bigger appreciation for their art. That's what uh, that's what I've noticed in my short short experience doing the interviews. Like when you, when they come here and we shoot the shit ahead of time, we don't really want to talk about too much because we want to save that for yep. the actual interview because we do have a half hour, 45 minutes to, to ask the questions we want to ask that you wouldn't have in a five minute radio and interview. So, I, I think Teddy's a number of times said, oh, stop talking, save it for the podcast because we want it to be like fresh and realistic and not like rehearsed. Yeah. So, that's, that's, that, that is the one thing I've learned in the year and a half we've been doing this podcast, Ted. Yeah. And the other thing you learned is don't do another podcast with Ted. <laughs> yeah. It's a little more easy. So, we're up to two things I've yeah. learned so far. Well, now that you're back in the radio game, though, you're just going to be gaining even more experience. Experience that you lost over the last, what, seven years? It's almost seven yeah, years. Crazy, yeah, crazy. So, <laughs> since now I know that you're his boss, how much did the podcast help in your decision to hire Ted? <laughs> so, if you want a radio job, start a podcast yeah. first. I have to think a lot. Teddy started yeah. deleting every episode of Oh Dear. <laughs> well, he gave me no choice. That's all I got out of him was, hey, here's what I've done in this podcast. And I'm okay, what else have you done? <laughs> no, to, like, honestly, to be, to, to be fair to you, like, you guys have done a great job. And, you know, we've all kind of said it kind of behind the scenes in radio as well. It's like, those guys are doing a lot of things that, like yeah. radio does. 100%. You know, a lot of you guys have been great at supporting the community and getting out and doing community things, interacting with audience. And, and that's exactly what radio does and, and, and does really well. Sometimes we forget. That, yeah. That's what we're there to do. I think you guys should have applied too, though. Because <laughs> when Pete told me Teddy applied, I was like, are you Oof. fucking crazy? <laughs> are you? Have you listened to the guy before? Yeah. That's what now I'm like very even tonight. You got to make sure like not going to swear, like going to try to keep it. Because <laughs> when you can finally flip that switch and it doesn't even become a thought on live radio. Like, and up? that is like, honestly, that is, you know, one of the things that was taught in radio school. And I went a long, long time ago uh, was when these things are around, yeah. you just you don't swear. You watch your mouth and now it is so different because we're the same on our podcast yeah it's all bets are off so now it's trying to remember that the podcast at this studio is a little <laughs> different from the, the or the mic at this studio is different from it, the radio it, studio and it just means that teddy's gonna have more work bleeping it out yeah. after the fact right we added a seven second delay we've never had to do that before but, <laughs> yeah, smart better safe than sorry yeah. so have you have you struggled on air since you returned it's been three four weeks now i mean I, that's probably a question for peter or I anyone who, i can handle who, that who listen. Yeah. <laughs> yes yes <laughs> no i think it's been great like yeah because it's seven years away yeah. uh and it is kind of like riding a bike for the most part you cry a lot. You yell at your dad. Don't let go. <laughs> no, it is. It's been that was great. A weird bit. Yeah, I'll give a, a shout out to my <laughs> radio. I was, I was just going to say, is Matt yeah. playing the role of daddy? Here? Yeah, is that what pretty we much, just yeah. discovered? Is that what goes on? Well, really, before? it's like Matt is holding on to me. Right, Matt's been in radio in Central Alberta for I don't know how long. Right, so it it really is. It's 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 a fun flip of the script too because I get to go in and be Ryan Lund. Right, it's, it's, pre, it's pretty sweet, bus, guys, and I just sit it's there. Like, sick. how can I throw them off? How can I say something stupid? What, what can I do? So, yeah, no, for, for me, it's been a, a good transition. And yeah, that's, I haven't done the podcast really since I started. So hopefully I'm better at, at this part of it, but probably not. Do you remember the first time I met you? I'm trying to think. I, maybe. Did I sell you a textbook or is that someone? No, else? no, no. School? You, Pat and I went to school together. Yeah, yeah. Craigslist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back in the misconnections days. Yeah. Um, no, I was a year behind Ted at SAIT and on one of our first days in school, Big Dick, uh, one of the professors there. <laughs> Brought in a couple. <laughs> His radio. I, I know sure. who he, I know who they're talking about. So I'm like, no. But brought I can in see a how couple of you little, second huh. years to just like tell us how great the program is, and there's no abuse or harassment or anything. Blah blah blah. And uh, you were introducing yourself, and you stopped yourself mid introduction to tell Marcello Castronovo, a fellow classmate of mine, that he had beautiful eyes. He did. What am I supposed to do? Just pretend <laughs> that was, this guy didn't have the most piercing blue eyes those, I've those ever Italian, seen. Yeah. Italian eyes. Yeah. You you weren't wrong, yeah. but it was memorable introduction for sure <laughs> and you knew everything you needed to know about me right too so it was a good introduction it was a good introduction there's what was that guy it. doing in uh radio class or yeah. whatever for he he had great eyes just to see how who could keep their attention or not and i uh, failed well, there was <laughs> a there was a tv side as well right so maybe yeah. that did he eventually go no no no, no stayed he with the stayed in radio. radio all right well let's Joe, get him Joe on the Marcello. podcast we'll catch up with him <laughs> he's in a killer band now oh so he might be on your podcast very possible. Right? Yeah, that, very, didn't, very that possible. didn't look, sorry, Marcello, that didn't sound very promising, but we'll maybe have you <laughs> on ours. <laughs> Mr. Blue Eyes himself. But the, back to your podcast, or because that's the kind of why we're here to, to shed some more light on it. A nice crossover episode. Uh, hopefully we can send like a dozen of our 15 fans your way. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> 
But, yeah, but uh, you guys better come back. There's yeah, there's enough. You have enough room in your ears for two. You podcasts. can subscribe to multiple <laughs> YouTube accounts, right? Yeah. Like you can't. It's not just one. We'll, oh, we'll send them. I've back. been doing it wrong this last year. <laughs> I don't, you're probably not even subscribed <laughs> to our YouTube no. account. I would no. Think. Yeah. Playboy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Playboy infamous Playboy YouTube channel. Who the yeah. hell still subscribes to Playboy? <laughs> the, the someone who likes to read yeah. <laughs> for articles and jokes and uh, oh yeah, the yeah. jokes. So, but for your guys' podcast too, I know a lot of it focuses a lot on Canadian bands, which is awesome and really the more like the smaller the indie scene uh which i think is really cool you you've had some big names i know rain Meta was one and, and the dead south but how important is that for you guys too to just give a voice to those bands who are just as talented as as any other band huge. really around canada yeah huge it's uh and and it's something that we're trying to do as well when the drive still existed in red deer um dedicate some time every a couple nights a week to uh bands that weren't getting radio play anywhere else in the country really for the most part so it's big and those bands are still coming through town so why wouldn't we try to expose them a little bit it's the uh again going back to what i said with, with patrick and i just both being passionate about sharing new music like a lot of reason you get into radio uh you know at least on our end of things is music right you want to share the music that you love and introduce it to people and, yeah. and this is a really great platform to do that and help you know, those younger artists and up and comers can i ask what your guys' process is when you decide to have a band on your on your show do they do they approach you or do you approach them or like it may be different now than from when it started a year ago all kinds of different way for yeah, the most part obviously it started with us reaching out yeah and like it sounds crappy but like a lot of the times when you're being reached out to it's not right. it's not necessarily someone you would have reached out to although you know time passes and that can change a sometimes lot. those work well, out too honestly yeah. one of our best episodes i think that we've had right. w- was a band that had reached out and uh, we didn't know too much about and yep, just kind of like ah, nothing about I'm them. not sure about these guys and and then they kind of persisted a little bit and we had them on and like easily one of the best episodes yeah shout out to mountainhead mountainhead <laughs> mountainhead check out the mountainhead episode and you'll, you'll see why yeah, yeah a lot of fun really Crazy really dudes. cool really cool, cool dudes well and that's what i really like about the podcast because obviously it's a music based one i mean if you're not huge into music or that music scene i think you still listen because it's like anything when you're interviewing right it's more of like it's a human interest podcast because you guys go way beyond the music you get to know the people and learn some really cool stuff and uh and you will there a couple bands will will catch your ear and you start listening to them and you could have a, a new favorite band out of it too so uh, that's what i really like about it like I've learned a lot about a lot of different bands that I honestly had never really heard of. Well, I appreciate that. And I, I do think, and I know a lot of people disagree on this, but I appreciate knowing more about the artist. Sometimes that will convince me to consume their art mm-hmm. that I otherwise wouldn't have you know, made the time for. And it goes the opposite way as well. But I, I do think that that's important. I think that people do want to know to a certain degree, the kind of people that they're spending money on or spending time in their their heads with, right? Yeah. And it's a get to know you kind of thing, right? The more you kind of feel comfortable and even friends with that artist, the more you're going to want to support them and and listen and check it out. So that's kind of... And we never want an interview to be an obligation either. There's so many instances where that's the case, where they are obligated to sit down and spend time with you. They're on the circuit. This is what management told them they have to do. That doesn't create natural, fun conversation at all. I can imagine in radio where you have this artist that's obligated to, to show up to the radio station and do the five or 10 minute interview you and it does not want to be there right because he's done it with 10 other radio stations and you can just tell he's not into it so on on your podcast it makes sense where you don't want to make it an obligation where you it's kind of like a thing they're looking forward to yeah i know uh, we've been lucky but i feel like the people we've interviewed almost every time it feels like they wanted to be there yeah so. i mean if you're if there's an obligation to be on the oh dear <laughs> podcast you need to get a new job yeah. because that's it that's, you made some, that's stupid you made some questionable yeah. life decisions yeah. who do you owe yeah. and you do you do get the artists who basically have it written on their hand yeah it's really great to be yeah. in blank yeah. yeah you always put on a great show here which you know what i will say honestly in 25 years of doing this i like it hasn't happened often okay yeah. where i've had an artist where i'm like okay i can tell they just don't want to be here yeah, well, if they come it. in with that attitude, then they're going to come off as, right. you know, the, right. having, yeah. having we having like attitude. Honestly, we've had a, a couple of artists that would come into the station and it would be that five minute interview and they stuck around for like an hour afterwards. We yeah. had, we've definitely had a couple of artists that would like went through and talked to everybody in the building. Totally. Yeah. That's where you, you really get to know them and actually learn, the, <laughs> learn their secrets and yeah. backstories. So. Well, it, it's not always, again, it's not always about the music. Like we did three interviews this week to prep for a vacation time and... I mean, each sing- every single interview went off in some direction that 
had nothing to do with music too. Like we were doing fast food hacks with Keegan Powell the other day, right? Like we talked probably 15, 20 minutes on F1 with yeah. Sister Ray yeah. this week. Right? Yeah, wild you, stuff. You fit in well on this podcast because we didn't, <laughs> we'd spend the first 10 minutes talking about Teslas and cars and didn't even get to your podcast. So, but that's, that's the, the best thing about it too, right? And have you found too, I know for us that, you know, the group interviews, having more than one of us do it versus the one-on-ones kind of both for both sides, I think just make for way better conversation too. Cause you could have, you know, just Patrick doing an interview or just Peter doing an interview and, and nor usually too, you have more than one artist on there too. Mm-hmm. So obviously too, that's way more fun. But the diet, those, like yeah. the thing that's great about that too, is that you guys each bring something a little different to the table. So, and I think the same with Patrick and I, mm-hmm. we come from this, you know, we're both music fans, right. uh, but come from kind of different sides of yep. the music. Do our research so differently. 100% so we could bring something a little bit yeah. different. We do share our research. We just have a Google Doc that we use for every interview and so we're able to look at our notes and stuff. But Pete usually listens to a couple previous podcast interviews. I usually just stick to written articles. But yeah, we do have a different dynamic and it, it works well. And we've done a pretty good job over the last year and a half figuring out who wants to talk when. We've got little subtle signals, I think, right? Yeah. The only thing we're missing is that in between questions, we're not taking shots at this guy during the interview. <laughs> you can. Right? But yeah. Go we ahead. We just randomly just... That's well, shots at this is our dining signal. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool about real estate, but let's talk about why Teddy's an idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a long interview. Yeah, that wow. would not be a five-minute interview. <laughs> and it's fun. Like, that works Oh yeah, really well. Yeah. In, when in radio, Ted's right? watching, like, yes, it works. Yeah. 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 Sometimes yeah. you have to really yeah. get yeah. very animated. We with find it. if all four of us try to talk at the same time, eventually it just works out. You guys don't do like footsies or anything? <laughs> we do, but that's just, that's different. Just for yeah. fun. Yeah, it's just for yeah, fun. Yeah, that's, that's, pre, that's pre-game, <laughs> post-game? We, that's, that's all During, the time. All the time. Yeah. During, okay. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I like what you're saying about this Google Doc. We should have thought of that years ago. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what so do you tell do? me more what about do Google Docs. Is that, just, what is whatever that Ted tells us is what we do. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's not like you guys read it anyway. I did. I do. I, used I read to, it. I used to give them a breakdown and they didn't read it. So we just kind of meet before and, and roll with it. But uh, one thing I want to do is because, again, it's overdue. We've been off for a couple is give Bose a lot of love because obviously, you know, Brennan, Ryan and Riley kind of put this this studio together on the strength of you guys wanting to do your podcast, the road, the stage. And I know. You know, everyone in this room has a strong relationship with Brendan and everyone at Bose. So how much does that mean to you guys too? Just the community support there and with Brendan being such a, a music lover, right? Having him behind it and letting you guys have the freedom to, to come and do this. Yeah, I mean, that does go back to a lot of the reasons why we started it as well, right? Because we had felt over the years in, and, and just following the evolution of Bose, mm-hmm. Um, how much the music community continued to build and grow and not again just focus just on the musician side of that community which obviously is huge but the f- the fan side as well like people yeah. turn out for shows here and support music here big time so yeah that was definitely a huge factor in us yeah i mean and bose is uh truly like a special place so uh, how many times uh have we had a guest on where we we haven't said anything about yeah. bose and well, maybe, we in the pre-interview contract that stipulated that they <laughs> yeah. have to, you, within you five, yeah, yeah, five yeah. minutes of the beginning of the recording, you must say you, something. You do not get this on your rider. Your, the green yeah. room will not be equipped with. No, every 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 single artist who has spent time in Red Deer and at Bose, or even artists that have yet to come here but know about Bose, are excited because the hospitality is above and beyond from what we understand, what we hear any other venue in this entire country. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, no, they, it's crazy. They show, it's a special I, I mean, place. again, think of yourself in that situation where you you know you're in a band, you're touring, you've been on the road for three weeks already, you're already pretty groggy and out of it, and then you show up to a venue that could give a shit less that you're yeah. there and. You've got like this yeah. little cubby over there and you're just treated like it just sucks. They roll in here and Brennan's got that green room loaded with food trays, beverages. It's all so- comfortable couch. Yeah. You know, again, uh, a, a venue owner that is excited to have them there yeah. and engage and, and talk like it's man, just to, for being on the road that long and as much as they are. It's nice to have a place where you feel like home. Yeah. And yeah, that's going to want to make you come back. Too. And it's going to make you want to yeah. come back. And then that word also spreads to other bands. And, uh, you know, that's the one thing we've seen a lot of bands come through that typically would probably just yeah. like Edmonton and Calgary. Yeah. Because they can. That now definitely detouring. Here. I've been impressed with the, the level of the bands that the Red Year gets. So obviously Crazy, Bose, yeah. Bose, Bose deserves the majority of the credit. It sounds like big part of that. And it's like almost every day there's a concert announcement. Yeah. And like, I can imagine too, when you're, 
going touring in bars, right? That you don't often get to go to a place with the atmosphere like Bose and for the green room, like a menu like Bose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Usually you'll get your typical pub food or whatever, which is good, but Bose is, is pretty upscale, right? For uh, yeah, Jackie's basically menu is a nuts. rock and roll joint. Yeah. And yeah. food's pretty important. That is a topic that does come up on the show quite <laughs> regularly with most musicians is they're all foodies, it yeah. seems. Well, yeah, when you spend however many days of the year being like, ah, am I eating, sorry for the brand name, Teddy, but am I eating A&W or Subway today for the we'll 30th day yeah. in a row? <laughs> uh, Bose is, you know, oh my God, there's a fruit and veggie tray. There's snap peas here. Like, yeah, that's, uh, I think that's pro- probably like, pretty exciting. So peas are the, that's the tipping point. Like, it would be for me. All band there. You heard it. Anyone listening? Not just peas. Give a band snap, snap peas. peas. Yeah. <laughs> A few weeks ago, I was dropping off some prizes at Bose for the for a golf tournament at like four in the afternoon, mm-hmm. and uh, we were walking in through the back door to unload them there. And there's that you know the the table or whatever that all the, the artists green room. Had. We yeah. we yeah we've got that before that fancy table. Yeah, we didn't deserve it. But <laughs> I we know got but it. They, yeah. Brennan let us sit there. Um, but they had the band was sitting there, and my jaw dropped at the amount of food that was on yeah, the it's table, crazy. and it looked and you could tell that these guys were having the best time. It's just like that those extra little things that they do. Ultimate on episode something or another (laughs) so let me let me let me ask you guys this if you guys were a touring band what would be that one thing on your list that would be that for your rider no green m&ms no i don't know on the rider yeah i don't know i'm a pretty simple guy i don't know these days sparkling water (laughs) yeah some perrier (laughs) see water Maybe that's, some Pepsi. That's how you know you're you're in your 30s now, right? Yeah. I think mean, yeah, that's yeah. how you know you're in your 30s. You get excited about sparkling water, right? You yeah. text all your friends. They have Apple now. Have you had it? It's so good. And you have like a 10 minute conversation. So that's a that's a very. And you actually message. laugh at the Michael Bublé yeah. commercials. Yes. Yeah. I actually snap peas would probably be number one. So I mean, come on. If you're on the road and you see a delicious, juicy, hydrating snap pea, well, and not just not going to be happy. But, but there is also like a dish of hummus. Yeah. Beside oh, it as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. If you had the hummus and now you're. Now you're talking my okay, language. Cool. Yeah. All right. Hey, so Lund, what would be on your rider? <laughs> like, what's the one thing? Uh so obviously a heartburn medication, but then, <laughs> like for for food, probably a churro. Oh, interesting. Yeah, like we don't have any good churros around here, but I know. So I, then, why would you want one from around here if there's no good ones? So you want to make them work. I, I want to make, make them, them work. Yeah. You want to know that they care enough about you. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's yeah, the yeah. trick. This guy gets it. Yeah. Like, do you know the story <laughs> about Van Halen and the brown M and M's? Uh, why they do that? No, I don't. Other than to be dicks, but it's like <laughs> it's to make sure that they're reading like what's on their uh, list, okay, right? Yeah. And actually attention to detail. So the churro actually would be a good one. Yeah, okay. that's a good pick. I'm trying to yeah. think. We haven't we've gotten into rider chat with a few bands, but I'm trying to think like was it the beaches that said they had a, it, there had to be a picture of Tony Danza? Yeah, I think it was. I think it was, <laughs> I think it was the beaches. beaches need yeah. A, yeah, yeah, they yeah. need a picture of Tony Danza. Oh, yeah, that's way better than yeah. the churro. <laughs> okay, now I want that. Yeah, we're all yeah. thinking food. And- <laughs> We've also seen some interesting riders, not like wild and wacky brown M&Ms and pictures of Tony Danza, but not to name names, but there's been a couple of things that I've witnessed in the last couple of years where I'm like, that was on your rider and that's what you did with it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> nice waste of everybody's time. But hey, they're paying attention. They got the job done. Well, I think one last thing to touch on because you're talking about all this and seeing these bands is not only do you two, you interview these bands, but whenever they're in town, you go. So it's not just all talk, right? You're not just you were going on the podcast, pumping up these bands, saying, hey, go see them. You're there to like, every show. I know that must get a little bit exhausting too, because right now, like we said, it's like every second night almost at Bose, but obviously that's something that was, was in your blood even before the podcast, right? But are you getting a little tired or you still love it? Well, I think I'm starting to show my age every once in a while <laughs> with some of these late nights, but uh, you know, definitely when it's gone through the pandemic, I, I have for sure noticed with, you know, because I think I've been to 20, 20 plus shows since March when things opened up again. Right. And yeah, I'm definitely, wow. yeah, I can definitely feel it after a few days. Now, I mean, I'm not, everybody goes to concerts for different reasons, yeah. right? Like whether it's you love the music, you want to go and party, drink your face off, blah, 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 blah. I'm at the point now where like I'm there for the enjoyment of the music. So it's not like I'm going hardcore and crazy partying through all of it. But uh, yeah, it does like it's whatever later nights and my ears have already taken a pretty good (laughs) beating over the years as well. So there is a constant ring that's just there. (laughs) Lovely. No, it's great to have those shows back. I mean, I did appreciate the break when the pandemic hit. I've admitted that before. It was kind of nice, but uh, 
yeah, since things started popping up again in March, I've actually since moved from the county to the city, which has made going to shows a lot easier and more enjoyable. I mean, Riley and I went down to Calgary last week for two shows in the matter of like three hours. That was pretty wild. Yeah, I'm not slowing down anytime soon. So, is there, uh, with all the shows being announced, is there one show this summer that you've got your, your eye on that you've kind of booked that time? off to make sure you're going well i haven't booked any mornings off if that's what you're asking <laughs> yeah i guess i guess that would um, be what i was asking no uh there's a show at stampede um on the 11th that i'm um, really looking forward to chastity and alex on fire and then we've got a number of shows we got a couple weeks off here at Bo's for july i think just with stampede and westerner days it's uh slowed down a bit but um i don't know i like honestly it's very hard to keep track sometimes i one of the big ones I was looking forward to this year was Jack White. I right, just went right. and saw him in Vancouver, so that was kind of a nice. a big one. But like as far as local shows, like uh, Boy Golden and the Sheepdogs coming up in yes, the fall yes. is going to be really, huge. really cool. Uh, yeah. And that'll be a fun night. Um, there's a few that aren't public knowledge yet that are pretty exciting that uh, that people will definitely circle on their calendars as well. So we've got Black Pistol Fire coming. Black back Pistol too, Fire which is, is huge, man, wild, like really good. I've never heard of them before. Unreal. Admittedly, I haven't really listened to their music much after, but it's just the show. Like some bands just have it, right? Like the stage presence, their music really it's lends just, itself to just live. Just two guys. Yeah. If you're not familiar with, just a yeah, drummer well. and a guitarist and. It's like uh, death from above, like death from yeah, above. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Or, yeah, like, yeah. What do you What do you like? Do you guys listen to music? I, I used to be really into music, but life gets in the way. So. Your own career, music? No, career, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But honestly, like high school, it was kind of like Blink One Eight Two, like kind of pop punk, that kind of stuff. Yep. So yeah, you might yeah. be excited for big. Biff Naked then. Mm. Yeah. It'd be a good Man. show. I know for one, for me, it, it's not going to be like a party show. I'm so excited for Crash Test Dummies. Mm -hmm. That's one of the ones more like it's kind of like a sit and drink and enjoy the music because they're not, uh, they got, you know, obviously like super, their two big hits are kind of uh, slower songs, but I bet you like probably such a great live show still. And just the nostalgia factor is that, huge. That's something that it was a topic of conversation a couple of weeks ago. But like, if you're going to go to a concert, yeah. like what's your, what's your number one reason for going to the show? Is it dancing? No, no, it, it may it may have been dancing in the past, but probably not today. If it's if I'm going away, if I if it's an overnight trip, yeah, I mean it's it's probably to be get, to get fucked up. Yeah, uh, if it's in town, if it's if it's a band that I I really want to see, then then I'm gonna tame it back a bit and and really try and take it all in. But if it's just some band that I got invited to, it's it's the party. So well, July fifteenth, Apollo Sons are in town, oh, and it's shit, going to be, be a real wild. good time. It's okay. a Friday night. Too. I'm around. You guys are <laughs> Uh, take off Saturday morning. <laughs> like like trombone, trumpet. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, like we had what like nine of them there? nine of them on this stage in yeah. Communal Creative Studios a couple months ago. It was wild shit. Holy smokes. So that's another question. How often would you go see a band that maybe you're unfamiliar with? So I'm not I'm not a big concert guy, okay. but if I if somebody like Ted or somebody that that I knew say you gotta check out this band out, they're they're amazing. For sure, I'd go and then if if they're back in town or if they're in Edmonton or Calgary. Yeah. Yeah, for, I'd, I'd go again. That's how you get into some of your favorite bands. I'll never forget back in school. You might have been at this show too at Sate when Arkells played it. I'd never heard of them. And a friend just said, you got to come see this band. And now they're, they're honestly... One of my favorite bands. I see them every time. So, that's it too. Like, just go to a show at Bo's. It's, it's not... Outrage. It's very affordable, which is the other nice mm -hmm. thing yeah. about, about shows there, right? And when you're into that indie music scene is awesome because it's affordable. You don't have to pay $200 to see. I'm not going to name. I'm not going to get free Factory advertisement. Boys. Oh, I, yeah. pay, I paid $200 to go see them. <laughs> and pay, I will well, you'd be pay a lot more than that. But but really, but you get the way more intimate. Like you get such a good bang for your buck and, and you come out of it. I'll, I'll go see bands that I don't even like live and enjoy them live because it's just such a different experience. So uh, Yeah, I, I would never. I don't think I could ever just just go by myself to a concert and enjoy the music. I'd have to go with a, at least one friend or a group of people. Like the the Foo Fighters, if they were to come to, to Edmonton, Calgary, or to Bose, yeah, I'd go every time. <laughs> so that's probably on the. I'm sure yeah. that's on the dock. Yeah, thousand yeah. dollar yeah. tickets. Yeah. Just heard about it. Yeah. Hey man, if they if they keep doing what they're doing there, uh, no, I I agree, man. Like if I keep, mean <laughs> keep putting the Tony Danza pictures up. Yeah, we. I mean, we had Future Islands. Were any of you at the Future Island show? So this is a band that you know has significant notoriety. They have one of the most memorable Letterman late night show 
performances ever from probably about eight or nine years ago. And they played Bose like a month and a half ago. Wow. And it was yeah. a crazy production, amazing show, nuts to butts on there. It was completely sold out. Nuts to butts. Nuts Can to we butts. use that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, I like that. It was, sense. It sense. was unbelievable. Nuts to butts all night. Was it busy in there? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed back yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like the the caliber of shows coming through is o- only going to get better and better, I think. And I think Lund will back me up on this, though. Brendan, anyone at Bose, if you're listening, we need another Spice Girls tribute band <laughs> concert because that was one of the most fun nights I've ever had. To be fair, yeah, it was pretty fun. There was like 90% women and, and Ted. Per- <laughs> and Ted. Well, I was there too, so... <laughs> Yeah, it was it was it was a pretty fun. Were night. you a little pop star as a kid or something? No, I you just like a play mic at home. You're singing. No, it's just BSB if, and NSYNC. What? If it's a good song, it's a good song. Backstreet Boy. The, I like the nostalgia factor. What shirt too, did he wear on his first day at a new job? Whoa, what was that? I I want it that way. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> make your make your rules very clear on your first day. I yeah. like that. Teddy yeah. didn't even need to wear a shirt. Yeah, I would have said. <laughs> yeah. No, trust me. I needed to. If I wanted to keep that job, I needed. <laughs> to wear a shirt <laughs> most of his shift there's nobody else in the building but towards the tail end there's yeah, other they're, people they're, in, the, okay. in the building to be considered yeah so <laughs> where do we go from there <laughs> uh, but really, i guess just to, to wrap up again you know the road the stage uh i think what you guys have done lo- both locally but for the canadian music scene in general uh, is pretty incredible so for people they want to listen follow uh watch the stuff on youtube where do they go uh communal creative studios on youtube please subscribe that's where we host all of our videos for the road the stage as well as a ton of other great content from what Ryan and Riley have accomplished here in central Alberta and our social medias. All the usual spots. Yeah. And shout out to you guys. I know that uh, you've run out of local businesses to interview. <laughs> <by this point. laughs> um, yeah, keep going. It's just time to bring them back in for repeats, right? Yeah, no, I mean, there's there's a couple more, but we really did want to get you guys in because it was uh, it was an obligation uh, for Bose being a sponsor that we did the, the cross. <laughs> no, I think I think it's just cool. We've shared this space so much, right? And, and yeah. we all know each other uh, in different ways. And I think uh, that's that's the other thing, too. I think in the podcast world, like like the local business world is you know, you need that cross promotion. You got to support each other. Yeah. We're not, we're not competing. You know what we're sharing, and I know you guys work with local businesses as well too. Um, and it's it's just great to show that love. I think at the end of the day, for Bose, who I think both these podcasts would not be going without Bose, without no. uh, Ryan and Riley. Yeah, we're we're happy to have you both here, center of the community. And again, that's a recurring theme on the podcast uh, when we talk to musicians as well is community, right? Yeah. And it's it's the say it's not just in the music world. It's what you guys do. It's what we all yeah. aspire to do is, you know, make where we are just a little bit better, a little funnier sometimes. Yeah, for sure. And the the feedback you get from the community has just been out of this world. It wasn't anything we expected. I'm, I'm sure you guys have probably gotten the same mm-hmm. same feedback if you've been pumping out this many episodes in this yeah. short period of time. So, that's, that's the one thing that's really blown me away. Well, another thing that I think you guys are responsible for and, and your other co-host as well, Dustin and Peter Michaels to an extent, is that the process of Oh Deer has directly led to Ted hopping on airwaves in Red Deer. So, I'm sure some people are happy about that. Like Everyone but Peter. Some people were really yeah. upset. Some people but were really upset. Desperate, these are the yeah. people that are responsible. Should maybe lay off the beers while they're going through audition tapes. But yeah, uh, when do we when are we get our royalty checks for that yeah. for that new job of yours, Ted? Well, I just paid you for 2021. <laughs> so I mean, what, what does that tell you? Yeah. You're bang on with that, and I think. Ooh talk about it again and again is that is the power of community support right to go on this podcast again that's why i urge uh, if you're a, the road the stage fan listening to this uh should probably go back to a good podcast and keep listening to the road the stage but uh give it a listen you know especially with 62 episodes like there's so much variety there there's uh some really cool ones too with just you two or just talking to ryan too about his job so uh lots of learning there uh, whether you're a music fan or not highly suggest it so uh thank you again both for being here and thank and you peter maybe uh listen to a, a different radio station the next couple of weeks if you want to come back happy we're actually gonna air check this after we're, we're <laughs> air check we'll head on his own yeah. podcast yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe maybe peter maybe he can air check lund for his popping peas i think that's some decent mic placement there we're all thanks all right. P- yeah <laughs> peter's peter's been here an hour and you've already given me more compliments than ted's ever given me yeah, well, now you got a big head and you're going to note the techniques. Yeah, gone. Now Peter said it was okay. having a big head today. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. <laughs> that, like, literally, though, Instagram ads, you get the one. Do you have, is your head too big for sunglasses? <laughs> oh, thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> right, I'll tell you back. Peter, thanks for being here. Patrick. <laughs>
Unfollow me on social media. <laughs> you guys have to learn an instrument and we'll reciprocate and have you on our show, but you got we'll to get a show under. And then we have to go on tour. You have to go on tour. Okay. That's the stipulation. If you make it that we, far. What if we did a tour uh, like uh, live shows? Yeah. <laughs> We could, music. we could do I mean, do... you could talk to Dustin just about oh, yeah, his music gotta... knowledge, and that would be hilarious. He's done a live performance, though, in Spanish. So he oh, is a yeah. performer. You didn't see of the, the Lion King, King video? It's on our YouTube page. Okay. Oh, no. Out. Yes, yes. I do remember that. Yes. It wasn't so much just singing, it was just yelling in Spanish, but it was it was gold. I do know you have some uh, recorder. I do experience. have, yeah, so yeah. there we go. So listen for us at some point on the road, the stage. It'll be a hidden episode. episode You'll know it'll be a, a episode slow, 582. Yeah, slow interview week next year. You know, the oh dear guys, yeah. So again, oh thank you. Yeah. That's what it's called. <laughs> what? Your podcast. Yeah. Yeah, you've been on oh here for dear. a half hour. Okay, I get it now. All right. <laughs> Well, Patrick, sorry you couldn't be here with us tonight. <laughs> a huge thank you again to Patrick and Peter from the Road the Stage for joining us. I think a, a much overdue interview. Great to have them in and at the same time as us, we share this space and hear all about what they've done and accomplished with the podcast. Uh, obviously, great advocates for the Canadian music scene and a voice for those just lesser known, equally talented and, and hard work musicians out there. So hopefully even you guys learned a little bit about music just from that. Uh, I did. I mean, big props to those guys. I mean, they're, they're putting in a ton of work uh, rolling out a new podcast episode once a week. Like, even this week, they said they did three. Yeah. Can you guys imagine us doing three episodes in one week? We can you, barely do one. I know. That's a stretch. One in three months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I know and they're they're both busy with their, their full-time jobs too. So, kudos to them. I mean, what a cool experience. So, they're so passionate about it. They... It's something that's that's in their blood. They grew up uh, listening to music, and they have that that energy, that spirit for it. And can you imagine if they discover like the next big thing, and they're in it at the early stage, and then they, that next big band just gives them tickets to all their, all their yeah. shows? Like, what a dream! I just find it really cool that not only are they doing something that they're passionate about and obviously enjoy, but there's also the goodwill or like the charity component of it of just helping bands to grow yeah. and i think that's really cool that they're taking you know time out of their personal lives to do this i mean it comes pretty easy if you're already passionate about it but i think it's really cool that something like that kind of came out of red deer and uh, like they talked about in the interview it really came out of the bose ecosystem so just another example of just how awesome bose is but we all know that yeah and those are just two guys that are such a big part of red deer's music scene that you may or may not know behind the scenes or not obviously peter has been uh a figure in radio here in central Alberta for a very, very long time. And this kind of just came to me, but it was kind of cool because when Dustin first got his job was right when we had Jody as our guest. And then now we had Peter. Uh, so Aaron and, and Walsh, maybe you have some phone calls to make. Yeah, get I don't your, know. Get your new bosses yeah. on. That's, and it wasn't yeah, even as grill. Everyone's like, oh, are you sucking up to Peter? Like, no, if I was, I would have invited him to be on the show when I applied for the job, not after I got it. But yeah, like it's uh, those two guys. I've known Patrick a, a very long time and it's uh, cool to have them on here and like i said we don't talk about music local music enough so uh make sure you follow them and just especially just even on their instagram because you'll get lots of great tips about shows coming up or uh just even videos from a, a couple of shows so you can see what you're missing and not miss the next one yeah it's pretty amazing all the local local talent that wouldn't get that opportunity like how how else do you get noticed nowadays? I know you're gonna say social media with Instagram posts, yeah. but everyone <laughs> everyone's doing. That. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you have to be producing good music, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Like stuff that people want to listen. I mean, that's first and foremost. But I don't know the landscape of music has changed so dramatically. I mean, frick, I remember I was part of, I was part of the Columbia Club where I got my <laughs> yeah. CDs for ninety nine cents. Oh, that's awesome! I forgot about that. <laughs> like, but now that's not even no. a thing. And I hope not. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I have a, a childhood friend that's in a band and uh, they're actually on tour right now down in the States for like two months and playing every night. They get paid a fraction of a penny by whatever listen they get on Spotify. Yeah. Like yeah. it's just a totally different world and you know, kudos to those bands that are out there that are still grinding away and touring and I mean, ultimately that's how you get your fans. So And uh, and what's that band's name? Give them a shout out there in one because I know Brad, I voted him out a big brother that one time. So I feel <laughs> yeah. bad. So give him a shout out. Yeah, so they're they're based out of Edmonton, St. Albert, but they're called Calling All Captains um, and they're a pop punk band. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I like their stuff. That was kind of my my jam back in the day. And yeah, I mean, they're they're grinding away, touring in a, in a van and a trailer down in Southern U United States right now. So, I see um, all those updates. It looks like they're having a blast, Honestly, right? it's kind of incredible that they're this band 
from Edmonton and they're in like Oklahoma and Texas. Yeah. And they're saying that they're playing these these shows at bars that are probably similar to Bose and hundreds of people are screaming their songs back at them as they're playing. I'm like, that's pretty cool. So Yeah, that's gotta give you chills. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say just to talking to Patrick behind the scenes, like they're very they have their format and like when you when you're starting a podcast, you're interviewing people, what's the number one thing you want to do to try and get big and get out there is land the biggest possible guest that you can and not to take anything away from any of these artists, but there's not enough podcasts out there that are dedicated to giving that voice and and shining a light on those bands who don't get heard of as much and aren't mainstream. And I know they've had the likes of Rain Ada from Our Lady Peace on there. And those are the ones where normally you'd be like, oh, it's so exciting. And, and for those guys, they're like, yeah, it's great, but we don't want to become that uh, that type of podcast. So that's what really impresses me uh, with them is they're, they're sticking to their guns there. And I, I think they've built a, a great following in the music community. Now that I know you can subscribe to more than one podcast at a time. You I'm don't gonna... even subscribe or listen to ours. No, so I'm you... going to say I'm going to yeah. have to check us out. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know that. that was a nugget they, they they dropped to me during the interview. You can subscribe more, more than one. Who knew? <laughs> well, before we hear from our pal Andrew Russell, uh, we always have to thank the people who make listening to his real estate ramblings more tolerable. Uh, so thank you, Door Tender. We're enjoying some beverages in studio again tonight. Uh, thanks to our friends there. And we look, we always talk about how great Door Tender is in the winter because you don't have to go out, you don't have to drive anywhere. It's very convenient. But I think it's awesome in the summer too they have lots of great deals you're probably 10 times more likely to get a little day drunk or day tipsy in the summer or you're having a fire or whatever you need more booze uh give them well don't give them a call but i keep wanting to say everything phone related dial them up give them a call <laughs> text <laughs> send, us send at 106 776 yeah. <laughs> since i don't even have that number memorized yet it's on a sheet of paper that i don't have but uh, go online doortender.ca download the app you can order your booze if you really want to feel like you accomplished something, you can go in uh, and pick it up as well. So download the app, doortender.ca. Delivery is absolutely free. And of course, you earn doortender rewards with every purchase. So thank you again, doortender. Yeah, it was uh, again, a hiatus from uh, from those guys a little. I mean, I just I just ordered it still at home and they, oh, it's for the podcast. Yeah, sure. Whatever. <laughs> it's all this beer yeah. for six people is for yeah, they everyone else. They don't listen. So that's yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> So with that, I am. Uh, I wrote. I'm very excited to hear from Andrew Russell. That's just horseshit, though. But I'm sure a lot of people are excited to hear from Andrew Russell to see what the real estate market has done over the last few months. So here's the real estate market minutes, probably. So I would point out, Ted, that the market minutes would be more entertaining for you if you could actually afford real estate. But um, oh, you'll get there, buddy, burn. one day. Ouch! I, I can't even be mad at that. Good thing we took that 10-minute pee break so you could go think about That's why you're in the bathroom so long thinking of that joke. I was pre-writing my jokes, yeah. <laughs> Um, so the market, interestingly, um, after six months of absolute insanity, has started to calm down a little bit with the interest rates going up. Uh, fixed rates as we speak for insured mortgages are sitting currently around about 5%, uh, which is a pretty significant hike because a year ago, you could get rates at 2% or even somewhere even less than 2%. So... Um, the federal government is trying to cool the markets down, primarily in Toronto and Vancouver. Uh, those markets are now dropping in price. And so if you've spent any time listening to the federal news, it's a lot of doom and gloom. It's a lot of recession talk. It's that prices are going down. And so it's important to know that Alberta is in a bit of a different boat right now. And so when you listen to the federal news, it's literally talking about those two large markets. It's not focusing on smaller markets like Alberta and Saskatchewan. So Alberta should weather this quite well. I don't think we're going to see near near as much of an impact as the larger markets in Toronto and uh, and Vancouver. Um, they're seeing pretty significant price drops, but on the same token, they also saw massive price increases to the tune of like three to five hundred percent in a period of probably five to six years. Um, Alberta did not see anything even remotely close to that. So we very likely will see a slower market this fall. Um, we're already noticing things are starting to cool a little bit. That being said, the demand in the market under five 
500 is still quite strong. So all in all, the Alberta real estate market is still in good shape. Interest rates are calming things down. Uh, however, I do think we are going to power through this. I do think prices are going to stay reasonably stable and uh, I do see good market in our future. Does like the price of oil and gas right now affect the market at all? Like just even in terms of like what people can spend on a home, is, is that going to change anything? Uh, Alberta real estate has historically always followed the oil market. So um, we would see three years of up and three years of down. And so when I first got into the market in 2006, things were really hot because oil was booming. We then saw a slower period when oil went down. And then same thing, we were booming in 2014. And then when oil crashed again in 15, the market started going down. So yeah, the price of oil is very relevant, but it's it's not necessarily tied to the price of real estate. It's it's tied to the state of the economy and, and jobs and all of that other stuff that's going on. Um, and so the price of oil is a big factor because the provincial economy right now is so strong. Um, the provincial government, I think, just said they posted a $3.9 billion surplus when they were expecting an $18.5 million or billion dollar deficit. Um, so the Alberta economy, despite everything that's going on, is still in reasonably good shape. Um, and again, it's going to weather this uh, much better than the rest of the country. And so I do think real estate prices are stable. Again, we might see a little bit of an adjustment, but I think all in all, Alberta is a pretty safe place right now. I just love how far off they were from their prediction. <laughs> they're off by 21 billion dollars that just shows you how much we're reliant on oil and gas revenues in in this province well and in fairness nobody was expecting that the price of oil was going to shoot up to 120 bucks a barrel i mean three years ago people were saying we will never again see 100 a barrel oil it will never happen there's no chance like that was the talk that was going on forever and um you know as a result of the war in russia and and that supply being cut off um it has now shot the need up and obviously with the economy and everything turning back on, demand for oil has gone way back up. What are you seeing in the current market conditions related to uh, like real estate investment? So people that are maybe looking to buy a rental house that they can rent to other people. Uh, is that is it a good time to buy? Is Are the increased interest rates making it tougher? That's actually a very good question. Um, oh boy, Kev. So that's, there's two Mine sides. Too. There's two sides to that question. So we had a bit of a lull with real estate investment as the rates started to go up. So if you go to buy a rental property, the bank will actually charge you a slightly higher interest rate than what you can get if you're buying on your primary residence. Uh, rents in Red Deer, comparatively to the rest of the country, are actually quite low uh, and quite affordable. Now, with the rates pushing up, with the interest rates pushing up, it's going to force people uh, who can no longer afford a payment into the rental market. And so, rising interest rates will result in uh, rising rent prices. And so, we had a bit of a lull with the rental market. But as rents start to push up over the next 6 to 12 months, uh, we will see people purchasing investment property again. Because those properties, if you're an investor, the property needs to cash flow. And you have to be able to make sense of the monthly payment where it's at least carrying itself. Most investors want to get at least 5% back on their money. And so again, we're in a bit of a lull right now where the rents aren't covering that. But as rents push up over time, we're going to see the rental market start to ramp back up. I, I really enjoyed that question, Walsh, because no one can see this. It's a bit of a different setup. So Andrew's like directly behind Walsh. So he's trying to talk to right to Andrew while trying to look at him, but not be too far away from his mic. So his compromise was looking straight forward, not on mic or looking at Andrew. <laughs> but I was, still talked into my mic because I didn't want to get yelled at. Oh, you were a little, it was enough like oh, that I could pick you up. Okay, oh, but it was, you're still getting yelled no, at. No, it was, I just thought it was funny that you're just staring. You could have still looked at, like you were just staring, talking to nobody. Well, I wasn't talking it, to you. It made me laugh. Yeah. yeah. Ted, I have I a question. I could not answer that. I have a question for you. Was that comment a deflection from the talk about rising rental rates so that Lund wouldn't notice that he should be raising your rent. Uh, do you ever hear that old saying, Andrew? Shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Is my answer to that. Yeah. You know what? Andrew, that's very disrespectful. Yeah. Terrible talk Things have never been better on Teasdale Drive and you're going to come in. We've worked so hard the last couple months. We've, Ryan's we've... dad was in there putting in a new flower bed. Yeah, yeah. It looks great <laughs> over there. He actually was. Yeah. He was. <laughs> How did you know? You told me. Oh, I did. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, I was. Sounds like, sounds like, like who did we hire? A so, gardener and Don is just putting in flowers in the front. But for anyways, was that before? It was at the end of the the market minute. I was just gonna say, it sounds like the market value of the property on Teasdale Drive just went up. So. Man, it curb appeal did. It, it yeah. curb appeals 
curb appeal is huge right now. You're driving by, you're stopping at, at I don't want to say my address, <laughs> long, but you're stopping. You'll know my house. But yeah, you drive down that road, you'll, you'll see it. There's one, one pot with like eight flowers in it. Oh, that's there. And that's Lundy's house. They're popping too. That is, you know what? That was two and a half months worth of stuff. So thank you, Andrew, for the market update. This Andrew Russell market update was brought to you by Andrew Russell and Associates with Remax Real Estate Central Alberta, the official realtor of the Oh Dear podcast. For more information on the team and the services they provide, visit andrewrussell.ca. And uh, well, you know what, Aaron? Just stay, stay ready. Don't get too comfortable because now we're going to move into Deer Call. Deer Call is brought to you by Cilantro and Chive, home of the Caesars that eat like a meal. Stop in at either location in Red Deer or Lacombe for the burger of the month and support a great cause with $2 from every burger sold going back to the local guest chef's charity of choice. Cilantro and Chive, your favorite new destination to meet with family and friends for food, drink, conversations and fun. All right, so we chatted about how great it is uh, just seeing the return of so many events in central Alberta. A big one here in Red Deer is Westerner Days, uh, which we have obviously haven't been able to attend since 2019. Uh, the Pinocchio Stampede just wrapped up. I'm guessing right around when this comes out, Calgary Stampede will be well underway uh, and so on, right? There's all the rodeos, everything going on. So we asked everyone uh, what they liked best about outdoor fairs. Uh, congratulations to Kelsey B, who won the Cilantro and Chai gift card this time around, just for answering our question. It's that easy. She's got 50 bucks now uh, to go and... Uh, take us out for beers which is uh, very nice so make sure you're keeping an eye out for those deer calls on our social media for your chance to win uh, pretty easy there so to start off this is an obvious one and then we can build on it a bit but jolene kelsey tina michelle talia kim roxanne and shane said the probably the biggest reason most of us go is the food well, and roxanne added there's no calorie counter at the fair mm-hmm. there is a weight counter have you ever <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like literally there's that game. that's optional though it's not like <laughs> yeah. when you leave like, on the scale they're like hey i get, bet you i guess your weight within like five pounds and then they always do or like i've never i've never done it because i've just been too ashamed yeah. but <laughs> nobody like, needs a public shaming yeah, like yeah, that but they, they're always right obviously yeah. that otherwise they wouldn't do it but that's sure. optional he made it sound like to get out of the park you gotta weigh in weigh out uh you gain too much weight you can't leave <laughs> yeah or you're you didn't gain you didn't enough, get you can't enough leave. Yeah. yeah that's always your time to like push the boundaries and try something like the deep fried Oreos. Like it's yeah. always just kind of that it's one off stuff yeah. that you, you don't normally see. And it's always deep fried. Well, right? and then the stampede takes that shit way too far though. Yeah. But, but like I've had, I've had cricket pizza before. Like there's some stuff. It's like, like what, what's your favorite stuff? fair food? I mean, um, I could say, you know, Leanna, Kelsey, Liesel, Julie, and Kim all said mini donuts, which I think is that's, a, they're that's right. solid. Is a big yeah, one. And that's I, solid. I will give a shout out to, I don't don't know if they'll be at Westerner Days, but if they're around, or f- because our friends at Holy Moly Mini Donuts gave me a uh, mini donut Sunday a oh, couple of weeks ago. And like, yeah, yeah, I could kiss this body goodbye, but it was unbelievable. <laughs> and I know they'll be out and about. So those donuts are good too. Like stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they were part of our uh, Oh Dear Hunt last yeah. year. And I, oh, we had so many yeah we did so many so much feedback about how good the do- like they people just like stayed around there and yeah. ordered more donuts so Aaron what, what's your favorite pair of food I'm a sucker for the classics so the mini donuts are tops but when deep fried Oreos first came out mm. like years ago that was quite a delight to find at a fair uh yeah the, all the all the treats are the, the awesome I, I think for me it's it's a taco in a bag mm-hmm. like, like it's it's just so easy and simple simple and it's it's, it's very feasible when you're walking around just munching, like munching a on taco, the but it's in a bag and you yeah. don't lose and all you know, your stuff I, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not messy because if it falls, it just falls back into the bag. Wow. I get it. Very it's, practical. Yeah. yeah. Very, very practical. Yeah. Because Leanna also said lemonade is one of her favorites. Yeah. And I think, I don't even know, a lot of it's not even like anything special, but especially on a hot day or something, it just hits I don't good. know, man. I think at the fair though, some of those places There's make some, like the fresh squeeze, yeah. like they do it legit. Yeah. And then Berkeley said, have you had these? There's different variations, but elephant ears, like basically just like the big, so almost that, like that was That was thing. my answer for the favorite fair food. So I remember that from when I was a kid at the Edson fair way back when. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, but it's it's basically like mini donuts. It's just kind of 
all in one piece, to be yeah. honest. But so, so just, just lots of brown, like, like it's like sprinkled in yeah. brown sugar and yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, it's delicious. Oh, sounds good. Yeah. My baba used to make elephant ears. Really? Yeah, no. they were incredible yes. from scratch. I think for me, I'm such a purist. Like, there's nothing special about them, but especially when I would growing up going to the Calgary Stampede, as soon as I got in the gate, I'd have to get that foot long, whatever it is, corn dog. Yeah, I don't know what it is about those, uh, but that is well, my it's absolute convenient. favorite. It's just a dog on a stick. Yeah, it's, it's like so you got your tacos in a bag your yeah. hot dog and a stick what a world we live like it in. tastes good and you're not spilling it all over oh, your no, favorite it's, shirt if you die no, there's ketchup and stuff on that that oh. will end up on my <laughs> shirt and then you wipe it with your dirty hands yeah. you got a dirty <laughs> yeah. handprint on T- there. ted has a fair shirt yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it is there's circled and has little like signatures from the different <laughs> vendors all the carnies 1996 <laughs> yeah <laughs> Fourth best corn dog I ever had. Yeah. <laughs> Iowa State Fair is ranking the corn dogs. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You know what? I'm going to Western Days this year, and I'm ranking all the food. So stay tuned to Lund's Instagram for that. Oh yeah, we should, man. Yeah. Let's do it. I want to get my my uh, Instagram reels. Maybe you can oh. do a Instagram live video this year. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh wow. Yeah, I could probably do that. Man, this is exciting. <laughs> big summer. Big big summer this year. Good thing everything we talk about doing on this podcast, we actually yeah do. we, so we always. Let's do it. Yeah. You know what? We're batting like 250. That's not bad. <laughs> Out of like 100,000. No, no. I don't no, like 25%. Yeah. 25%. Yeah. Say. Yeah. Andrew, do you have a favorite fair food? It must be nice for you. You just walk in, you can see over all the people and just find exactly what booth you want to go to right away. Yeah, it must be nice being tall enough for every ride. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Self burn. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you got yourself good. <laughs> no, it went over his head. Oh. <laughs> no, I so well, so two facts there. Uh, one, I've been told that I'm great to go places uh, or crowded places with because I'm very easy to find if I ever mm-hmm. get separated. Two, uh, I rarely ever go to the fair because those giant clusters of people makes me anxious. So yeah. um, I've had to go with my kids the last couple of years. Um, oh, sounds terrible. We had a... <laughs> We had a beaver tail, uh, which I think is the same thing as an yes. elephant ear, yes. which is the same thing as a mini donut, which is delicious. Can't complain. Uh, as a kid, the only thing I remember from the fair as a kid was was taking home cotton candy, oh, which yeah, like when else do you get cotton candy? I think it's pretty rare to find otherwise in a fair, but... You kind of mentioned like going as a kid and like my memories of Westerner days are honestly when like we were in high school, when Westerner days was on, that's where you went. Yeah. It was like going to the Rebels game and doing yeah. laps on the concourse and you see your friends. Yeah, and then- That was Westerner days. Yeah. And you see the girl or the guy that you're crushing on walking down the midway. Mm-hmm. Though, yep. That was... Uh, take her in the zipper together. Th- those were... Yeah. If, if you think back, <laughs> those... Throw up together afterwards. In it. <laughs> and, oh, I throw up But th- it. those were like high pressure situations. Sure. Yeah. As, as a young oh, yeah. person, you know, trying to fuddle your way through life and... Yeah relationships and friends but yeah that's kind of what i remember is just those nights under the stars like riding on rides and just hanging out with your buddies yeah. and maybe causing some trouble for the security yeah. guards yeah, it's yeah. not quite your turn to answer we still have the listener stuff to get through but a good answer nonetheless but it just that cut does, it and put it over there that, yeah that does build on so shane and kelsey said the midway and rides but even more specifically amy and joanne said the zipper oh, you remember too you'd always sometimes have that dickhead who would look at you dead in the eye you know what he's about to do you're saying no no don't do it and before before the ride even starts, he just gives your zipper like the biggest yeah, pull. Right. Oh, that, ooh, I better rephrase <laughs> how I said that. <laughs> Say push. Say push. Yeah. yeah. But you know what I mean? He gives the, spins the ride like your little cart that you're on. And it, it, even before you start, you're ready to throw up before the ride actually goes. My uh, my two biggest throw up rides at the carnivals <laughs> are the are the zipper and the Gravitron. <gasps> you guys remember the Gravitron? Uh, Is that the one where you're stuck to the wall? That's it. And that's all. Spin. You're and stuck just, to and the you wall. Can stick however you want it yeah you can you try and stand up a little bit and then like you're using so much energy and then you can finally get like your body off the wall and then you just feel nauseous yeah. and then yeah. and then of course you've already eaten the uh deep fried oreos and the taco and, like you've eaten all the shit anyway so you just know what's coming out yeah Gravity's so, gonna yeah. fuck you up. So you used, used to be able to flip upside down on the gravitron once it got going because no. you're stuck to the wall, so you could flip upside down. My <laughs> absolute fear was having someone throw up oh. in the gravitron, which I'm sure has happened for, and it, but that was my absolute fear all the time. Like, I, you know what caused? Yeah. Yes, 
the Sandlot call. Every time I hear a fair, I automatically think of that scene in the Sandlot yeah. when they all yeah. have chewing tobacco and, and then, then they throw play up. tequila and the gravitron. Yes. You're like, oh my god! And no. they yeah, small. It's terrible. That so. is, I think you hit on that. Like Walsh, though, my biggest memories from the fairs growing up in Calgary went to the Stampede. It was all about the rides and that type of stuff. And Nancy said the games, the Midway games, too, are, are her favorite part. And I guess when you're over 18, there's some of the. I don't know if they have no, them no, at Western no, no, Days. No. Did they have the no, gambling uh, ones? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 not, yeah, you don't have to be over eight, or you didn't have to be over well, eighteen. You couldn't get caught. They, uh, yeah, I'm sure they. I'm sure yeah, now because they're stringently difference. checking yeah. IDs. They, or, yeah. back in the day, they were not. As long as you had money, they didn't care. <laughs> and then you would spend like my fair game is that wheel game where you win like one dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars, or nothing. Mm-hmm. And then you just like it, it, all you, all you do is spin. They spin a wheel. Oh, really? and you put money on. You think if it's going to uh, land on a one, five, or twenty. And that sounds exactly like gambling. Yeah, it, yeah. it is. It is. <laughs> Yeah. And you, you should have been over 18, but I remember being 15 or 16 and losing like 40 or 60 bucks and having the best time of my yeah, life. You still see that. Like if you're at a crowded table, you'll see phantom arms yeah. jump in with the, they're kind of hiding behind the crowd. But even like the actual games, sure, a lot of them are rigged. You spend a hundred dollars to win like a six dollar yeah. stuffed toy. But a lot of that's still a lot. Some of those games are pretty fun, especially for the kids. It's the principle of the thing, right? Like you've already mm-hmm. tried to win and then you're just going to pay whatever yeah. it takes to it's actually the sunk win. Cost mentality that yeah. Better Call Saul taught me about. Yeah, yeah there you um, go. Here's a huge one that I think often gets overlooked and I think for Westerner days this year uh, is going to be incredible is Alex said the music. Yeah. So that's always every fair you go to, there's always some great acts. Westerner days this year has, uh, well, your uncle Uncle Corb, is playing, yeah. right? And uh, Billy Talent is playing and then one of my favorites ever, Alan Doyle, which is going to be a great show because it's just drinking and sea shanties and a lot of fun but that's three really really good acts that kind of hit a a bunch of different um demographics there and it's amazing like billy talent's still going strong that there's a high you could have seen them at westerner days in high school I'm Pro- imp- yeah probably did yeah. honestly i'm impressed they definitely been through voice. right here yeah like the way and they so, the it's the always way screaming sings. yeah yeah i've seen them live a couple times they're actually really good yeah so i guess we're going we'll go to all three but that is you know and not even just those big acts but always at the fairs there's the again the the lesser knowns are just a local person playing a guitar the guy who plays like nine instruments at once uh, talia said just the atmosphere atmosphere in general. So I guess that goes back to Kevin to, to what you said. JLAR on Twitter said the parade, which almost wasn't going to happen this year because uh, they, they didn't oh, have enough yeah, floats. Oh, that's right. And then the, everyone stepped up. Uh, but yeah, the parade's another big one too. Didn't get Kevin Costner this year. Didn't even get Kevin Walsh for the, the Western. Well, no, they asked, year. but I declined. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah. They didn't <laughs> but have can a I, can I air a grievance yeah. about, yes. about parades? Yeah, okay, go ahead. Why can't they throw candy anymore? This is bullshit. Like they're saying, oh, oh we can't throw because then like the kids get in the road and like, come on. Well, yeah. What was, was the actual, some... what was the actual yeah. reason? So I thought this was going to be like some political BS, but no, that is a very just... good grievance. And uh, it's uh, be- basically because they don't want kids running out grabbing candy and maybe get hit by a yeah. float. And like, oh, it promotes them like being like running in the road. Like, I honestly so you can thought, hand it like hand to hand, but now we but can't they don't touch even each do, other But they anymore. don't even yeah. do that. I like, honestly they don't, thought they were just worried about like psychopaths, like poison and candy. Like, well, and, I'm sure and that's giving. a worry. I'm sure. But that's. Not. I know, but that can't be like a main. I that that's honestly No, that's the, the main reason of Halloween. Yeah. So that's why I thought, that's honestly why I <laughs> right. thought they didn't throw candy at parades anymore. Yeah. And so, because, may, and maybe it is, but my understanding was they wanted to limit kids running in the road and yeah. getting used to that. And what, like, I'm not going to get into it, but I just. Yeah. I re- we all remember those yeah. days when that we were the kids like that. The, yeah, absolutely. The the I've got great news for you, though. You have a job. Actually, you'll start a new one right before that. You can go buy your own candy and bring it to the it's parade. It's not, not the same. Same. Yeah, but then... You know what? The parade the, the, is when the, you make it. Yeah, but then the, like, the Knights of Columbus or whatever in their little cars, like they'll drive up and then like they'll get all mad at me and I don't want any of that. Yeah. So. There were, there it's so the Shriners, many. not the Knights the of Columbus. yes, yes. Sorry. <laughs> the Knights of Columbus are very upset right now. <laughs> oh, God. I'm Wait, sorry. The Shriners, got, yeah. Yeah, those guys the Shriners will drive up in those little cars and they'll get all angry. <laughs> uh, the last one that Liesel and Lisa, the two different people, very similar names. This is a big one too. Uh, it's probably the best thing w- when you go anywhere, but at carnivals especially, is the people watching. Yeah, like, there's a lot a, of interesting folks at carnivals. It, who think people aren't watching. And to be fair, 99% of the time, I don't think anyone's watching me when I know that's not the case. You're honestly... Yeah, but I'm not... I'm not uh, 
cognizant of it. Fair. That's a good word. That is a good word. I'm not. Uh, Write that I'm one down, Dustin. About it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what What did you learn? Ambivalent meant. Uh, ambivalent. Amb- ambivalent <laughs> means like you don't care. Yeah. Like, just, yeah. Yeah. So it. what? Yeah. Fuck it. Oh, yeah. Ambivalent yeah. All my fuck obligations. It. Yeah. Fuck, fuck that. Them. So you I'm have to be ambivalent about not getting candy and just enjoy the parade. Oh no, you want it's candy. just not the yeah. same. Yeah. I know. It's not the yeah. same. I agree. I think missing from your list is the agricultural aspect. You've got yeah. rodeo. Oh, yeah. You've got chuck wagons. You've got heavy horse pulls or any of the horse pulls. You've got blacksmith competitions, mm-hmm. cattle shows. Like that's by far my favorite part of fairs. Yeah, just piggybacking off that earlier to my story like high school was awesome and then honestly i probably went 10 years when i didn't go to the fair again and then having kids and going back because they want to go like now they have these massive petting zoos Mm -hmm. where they're very interactive and it's literally go in this pen and pet all these different animals and like my kids absolutely love it and then going to see the chuck wagon races and Mm -hmm. and everything that's going on there like they're city kids they they don't know what any of that is about and for them and me to just see the animals and yeah. the power and i think that's what you're getting at yeah. right there's that yeah. whole other element and so. a whole industry like there's a lot of people who work really hard that there's not a lot of opportunities especially in other provinces to showcase their horse pulls their chuck wagons mm-hmm. their whatever it is so it's um it's cool to shine a really big spotlight on some of those activities and so and janice did say like to the the pavilions that have like all the artwork mm-hmm. as well and the crafts it's, i think what i like too is Again, I just default to the stampede because that's where I grew up. But there's a, the whole building, right? That's just agriculture mm-hmm. and th- that opportunity to learn. And a lot of people who use it as a trade show, right? And yeah. show off, like you said, what they do. And I always learn stuff and I, I can't wait to see what I learned this year. So, the the one thing that I didn't see on the list there was like the, the shows, that, like not music shows, but the other shows. Like the grandstand. The or... grand, yeah. So, like, mm-hmm. like specifically, there was a hypnotism show. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also like... The, like there was an animal show where they bring out animals and show like how safe they are and and what they can do and stuff so so speaking of the hypnotism show i actually got selected to go on stage when i was like 18 17 18 and to get hip hypnotized wait get what hypnotized <laughs> <laughs> i was dustin we don't miss you at all oh hypnotized okay. he's ambivalent an amb- ambivalently <laughs> hypnotized <laughs> hypnotized i'm starting to cut you some slack but you said hypnotized too many times I- so i worked I and guess. you're 36 <laughs> years old shut up <laughs> honestly come over to the couch we're not as mean over there yeah no yeah shit. this is so anyway i go up there and there's like 10 of us on stage and he does his little thing and then you're supposed to like act like you're hypnotized and uh my thing is i couldn't take my feet off the ground and i played oh i played it so good and all the young kids were you, just eating it up so did he tell you before so he, like he taps you on the shoulder and goes like hey like when you wake up you won't be able to do this yeah you won't be able to do that but and so then, you never got actually hypnotized no. okay. you're not no. i don't think you're supposed to fake it or tell people that you're yeah. faking it haven't you ever been in a relationship <laughs> 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 but really i because i've known lots of people that like swear they don't remember maybe See, they're just better i, I don't you. know anybody that's that well, has uh, has a fish like swears that they've I, been I hypnotized. think the problem is you went to a hypnotist instead yeah. of a hypnotist no. and that was just second race so, yeah so when they so if you didn't play along you just like tapped on the shoulder and like told you to get off the stage <laughs> and then for the people that did either actually get hypnotized or pretended you got to stay on stage so i wanted to stay on stage till the end and i i made it till the end so you're a really good actor is what yeah. you're telling us yeah exactly so he thought you were hypnotized i want since i'm sitting at the big table anybody who's been hypnotized or is a hypnotist slide into lund's oh, dms we and get tell an us on, or we should yeah. get him on the show and hypnotize <gasps> one of us yes all right lund uh, i was at that show with you and uh i'm not completely convinced that you weren't man uh, thank you that's a compliment <laughs> The acting was pretty convincing, which kind of makes me doubt. Like, everybody gets off the stage, they're like, no, no, I was just playing along, but were you playing along? Andrew, I've never been hypnotized. I, I would pay good money for someone to come on this show and hypnotize me. Oh, there we go. Put Dustin, the call if out. You're listening, you're our booking agent now yeah. from home. Working from home, Dustin. I don't believe yeah. in that. Well, stuff. before we ruin the magic of parades and hypnotists anymore, I think we can uh, wrap up Deer Call there. But thank you again, everyone. 
uh, for your comments. I'm glad people, even after three months, still, I guess, winning a gift card from cilantro and chive does not hurt. Uh, but nice to see everyone interact with us and yeah, interact with us and Lund personally on Instagram as well. He he, It's part of the summer of Lund. So you got to do your part. Slide in to my DMs, hypnotists. Hey, or slide out, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Who cares? I'm ambivalent. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> So this will be interesting without Dustin and something we still don't have. We haven't, we've had two months to figure out what our punishment is going to be for this Oh Dear showdown, but somehow still haven't, but we know uh, there's going to be one. So yeah, let's move in to the Oh Dear showdown. Well, that's, that's why I haven't been trying is because <laughs> there's no punishment. The Oh Dear showdown is brought to you by Saks Thrift Ave, home of Red Deer's only rage room. Book online now at SaxThriftAvRD.com and get your rage out. While you're there, browse the best collection of vinyl in central Alberta or find that perfect piece of vintage clothing. Sax Thrift Ave, records and rage, vinyl and vintage. And on a personal note, oh. as today's Dustin, I was there today and Vincent was a delight as always. And I came away with some very cute vintage pieces. I took uh, my husband's cousin there. He's in town. So we went to check it out. And um, as always, it was delightful. So if you haven't been, go. Was the Tasmanian devil jacket still there? It was. <sighs> It's you got you got to get so it. So Aaron, man. you bought nice new clothes and you wore that garbage to sit at the big table tonight? This is also thrifted and vintage. Yeah, it actually looks it's pretty westerner days. So I was feeling I've been rewatching Stranger Things. I'm yeah, in my yeah, yeah. my vintage a, yes, western very. season, so I like And it. did you tell Vincent your name? I didn't have time? to this yeah, time. Okay. Yeah. Remembered that, not only my name but my husband's name. <laughs> is that a denim collar? It is. Nice. Yeah. Wind is going right to Saks. Nice. Yeah, I, 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 I'll, let's I'll scooter over there after. Yeah, are they open? <laughs> no. <laughs> Somebody text Vincent. Yeah. yeah. Let's move on uh, because after two showdowns, Dustin has five points. He gets zero today, so the worst anyone can do mm -hmm. is one point. Uh, Walsh has four. I have three. And Lund Come role in. reversal. Usually, I'm the one in the basement. What do I You're have? in the basement with one point. Oh, they have one. <laughs> You're gonna get at <laughs> another least one, one okay, today. Good. So, Aaron. Yeah. We kind of threw this on you. What do you have for us for a game? Since we're, if it ever stops raining, we're in camping season. I want to play, I'm going camping and I'm going to bring. Okay. So one person comes up with a rule that they don't share with everybody else. I will tell you what I'm bringing camping. You guys start to guess what you might be able to bring camping. I think we uh, had an off-air discussion about the rules. Basically, we're going to go around. Uh, you, if you can guess the rule, first person to guess the rule gets a point. If you guess the rule wrong, you're out for that round. And we're going to go all the way around. Once. There's five of us. So we'll go around once. If you have the most points, you win. That's simple. Three points for the most points, two for the second most, one for the third most. Dustin gets a big zero. Yeah. And if there's a tie, there's a tie. So go ahead. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring... A tent. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring a mattress. You cannot come camping. I, oh, man. I mean, you're not getting I'm, Yeah, I'm going camping and I'm going to bring a sleeping bag. I'm sorry, you cannot come camping. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring a house. You cannot come camping. I'm sorry. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring a pint. You cannot come. I'm sorry. <sighs> I'm going camping and I'm going to bring some Tostitos. Oh, I thought I had it, but I don't. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring a taco. You cannot come, I'm sorry. So a tent and Tostitos. Yeah, I have no idea. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring some nachos. You cannot come, I'm sorry. I wish, well, you can see it if you go on YouTube eventually. The, the puzzlement on everyone's <laughs> face. This is much harder than your off-air example. She is. started so easy and then now yeah. it's now it's really tough. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring a hat. You cannot come. I'm sorry. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring a tortilla. You cannot come. I'm sorry. Oh, I thought I had it. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring some soap. Tent, Tostitos, soap. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm going camping. I'm going to bring some people. You can come camping. Would you like to guess the rule? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I, I think I know it, but... I'm going camping and I'm going to bring some eggs. You can come camping. The rule is that the last letter in the word prior is the first letter of the next word. Winner, winner, oh, chicken dinner. Oh my God. <laughs> that. I, I <laughs> was just a show. Wow. What did you think it was? I thought it was you, yeah. like you had to have like, so like the word before. 
was like some. I'm bringing some oh. Tostitos, some, oh. so, some oh. nachos. So some you nachos. thought it was some. No. Uh, so I, was, I don't think she used some all the time. Oh, I think gotcha. it was like a, a, yeah. like a yeah. multiple word. Oh, yeah. but that was good. I wouldn't yeah. have got that. I was that. waiting to see right. what you are going to say. One that. point for Walsh. Lund. Good. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring boxing gloves. He's getting punchy. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring my Bobdale gloves. You cannot come. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring tiny people. You cannot come. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring shorts. You, you cannot come. Oh. I'm bringing an air compressor. No, you're not. <laughs> I'm going camping and I'm bringing a pound of feathers. I'm sorry. You're bringing boxing gloves and a pound of feathers. This is a weird camping trip. Man. Yeah, yeah, man. Boxing gloves. And a pound. I, I'm bring. I'm going camping, and I'm bringing a sledgehammer. You cannot come. I'm going camping, and I'm bringing hockey gloves. You cannot come. This one sucks, Lund. Uh, I'm going camping, and I am bringing a fishing lure. You can't come. <sighs> what if I bring a box of dust? No, uh, you're not allowed. Hmm. So, Lundy, if you go around one more time, no one gets it. You get a point. I'm going camping. I'm bringing this microphone. Boxing gloves, a pound of feathers, and your microphone. Yeah, party's going to be lit. Great game, Aaron. No I mean, idea. It's the hardest we've had to think in a long time. I mean, it's, it's yeah. going to be in so three simple months. when I say it. I know. Okay, hold on. Everybody hold on. Everybody hold you guys on. are barking up the wrong... Wait, Lund, uh, I'm going to bring a pillow. No. Oh, no, you it's can't not even come. your turn. He, oh, yeah. he's out. You're taking too long. Yeah, no, you can't come. Uh, Kevin, I can tell you right now, you're uh, not coming. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I'm gonna no, bring I can, a bird. I can literally tell you right now, you're not coming. Yeah, I'm gonna bring a xylophone. No. You can't oh, come. okay. All right, just tell us. We're running out of tape. Yeah. So you can say anything you want. You just have to cross your arms ahead of time before you bring it. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't know that part of the Physical game. So I should have answered when I was like this. Yeah. Physical cues. I can't even yeah. see you right now because <laughs> Kevin's in the way. Uh, that's why I leaned Not over. so short now. Oh, okay. I didn't know that was part that's of the game. That's why I leaned over to so see. The, so the rule can be anything. It, it's any rule. And you just decided to be a real dickhead about it. I thought that was pretty simple. I, I thought it was three syllables. Well, I thought it, I had it. might have been you simple have if I could see you. Before in other games. I've never played this game. You've never played going camping? No, no one invites me to do anything. <laughs> okay, Walsh, you're up. We got uh, one point, one point, and zero for Ted. All right. I'm going camping, and I'm going to bring some ice. I'm going camping, and I'm going to bring frozen corn. No. I'm going camping, and I'm going to bring some tea. No. Nope. I'm going to bring an icicle. No. Nope. I'm going camping, and I'm bringing some water. No. Nope. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring a slice of pizza. I'm going to bring ink. Nope. I'm going to bring some dice. Yeah, you can come. Oh, yeah, I'm just, I got to get back in the game. Does it just have to have ice in it? Yeah. Oh, that was be my guess too. I was going to guess <laughs> mice, but I was going to guess rhyming. Slice. Oh, slice. Yeah, that would have worked. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But I would have been wrong on the rule. Oh, he might have given it to you. Though. I would have given it. Yeah, Andrew, <laughs> Andrew, you should do a rule and do something that Lund can't see just to get him back. <laughs> no, I'm going to be looking at you like a hawk. <laughs> I'm going camping and I'm going to bring a BMW. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring my GED. You can't come camping. Oh, okay. A little on the nose, but I thought I'd try anyways. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring a wagon. You can't come camping. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring Sarah. <laughs> Who's Sarah? And she's coming camping with me. <laughs> no, you can't bring her. Oh, fine. I won't bring Sarah. Can I, can I still come? <laughs> I'm going camping and I'm going to bring my VW. Uh, yeah, you can come camping. I'm going camping. I'm going to bring my Audi. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring my Bratwurst. Yeah, you can come camping. Things from Germany. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. That was a good oh, one. I was just thinking like abbreviations for cars. I thought, I thought about that for, as soon as, let me get close to the mic here for you, Lund. When it, as soon as BMW, I was thinking maybe it's just things from Germany. And then you said VW and I thought, okay, is it cars from Germany? I didn't even know v just, Volkswagen was from yeah. Germany. Das Auto. <laughs> I wow, the, oh, well, yeah. That was a good guess, me. Ted, because I was thinking on my own clue, I was going to be like, well, I could bring the Autobahn. Yeah. No, but you you almost I threw bring, me off with like, I could bring beer, vehicles, I could bring yeah. bratwurst, but then I was like, no, that's all too obvious. Yeah, that's good. Because you didn't give it away. You almost tricked me but it, with the vehicle, ah. but sometimes you just got to go for it. Now I got, so it's 2-1-1, and this is the last, this, I'm the last one to go. 
Oh, do I want to do that? I yeah. just can't get over how pale your hand is. Yeah. Aaron's <laughs> making fun of me because I've golfed a lot already, so my left hand is a lot paler than my right because of my golf glove. But anyways, I am going camping and I am bringing eggs. Mm. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring a snail. You cannot come camping. Mm. You I'm- can't come either. Already? Yeah, that's different reasons though. Uh-oh. Go ahead and guess. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring a yo-yo. You cannot come camping. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring an ego. You cannot come camping. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring a chicken. You also cannot come camping. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring an eagle. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring some D-E-T. What is it? Deet? D-E-T? Deet. Deet. You cannot come camping. Eagle eggs. I thought maybe you were making a political statement of some sort. No. (laughs) No. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring everyone. You cannot come camping. He couldn't come with his egos, so. No. I'd rather have egos than everyone. I'm going camping and I'm going to bring a nest. You can't come camping. This is a lonely camping trip with my eggs and eagle, you guys. I'm going to bring a blue jay. You cannot come camping. And you know what? I'm going to throw you guys off. I'm bringing the egos. So you don't have to. Is this some sort of test about how well we speak into the microphone? Is that what you're... (laughs) That's my job now. I'm just practicing for my real life job. Okay. That wasn't an official guess. But you can bring egos. That's a hint. Yeah, that's a big hint. It's bullshit. Or everyone. It's discrimination. Why can't I bring egos? You you just can't. And I think I know why. I don't know. I'm going (sighs) to... Fuck this game. Uh, that <laughs> Who I, the hell that thought I brought, of this game? <laughs> that I brought to the literal table. I don't know. I guess I'll bring a birdie. No, you can't come. I don't want to. I'm it's going camping and I'm going to bring an apple. You can't come camping either. <sighs> come on! <laughs> I'm going camping and I'm going to bring my troubled tea. You can't come. It's a real stumper, Ted. Yeah, this is a disaster. I bring an ego. I'm the only one who can bring ego. Stop asking. You guys Lego bring your own ego. shit. I have no idea. It, it won't count. Get him. Get him. Get him. Andrew, Andrew, do you have a guess? Well, is this is this something to do like that I can't do because I'm sitting on a couch right now? No. Oh, okay. No, it has then nothing no, to I do don't with have a table guess. versus couch status. Damn. I got it. Could I bring a zoo? Yes, you could bring a zoo. What is it, Aaron? It has to start with the first letter of your last name. So I can bring all the He can e- bring eggs and, eggs and everyone. Oh, oh, You'd have to bring a lantern. I You'd bring the water. Wieners or water too, yeah. I thought it was the last vowel in your first name. But it's not even a point for Aaron because it had already gone three yeah. rounds. Yeah, that's fair. But so, I still won. So I get, hey, I get three points. Yeah. You two tied, you get two points, which means Dustin has zero. So right. Lund, you're at three. Yeah. I'm at six. I take the lead over Dustin. We're both at six. Yeah. And Dustin's at five. Ah, suck it, suck it, Dustin. That's what you get for being so a good it's father six, and five, husband. five, three. Yeah. Oof. Okay, it it took a little while to get there, but good game, Aaron. Welcome to the table. Uh, And with that, I think we definitely should wrap up because uh, this recording is a lot longer than the actual episode will be. But thank you, everyone, again. A huge thank you to Patrick Bateman and Peter Michaels. I better remember that name. He's my boss. I blanked a little bit there. From the road, the stage. Make sure you check them out. As always, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Bose Bar and Stage. Thank you, Riley, for sticking it out on technically, it's the night before Canada Day, so it's technically a, a Friday night. Uh, Riley's hanging out with us thinking, when the fuck are these people going to go home? And then we just decided to play the longest game of all time. So you guys know the drill. Uh, follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, make sure you subscribe to YouTube and on your favorite podcast site. And uh, I guess we'll go final thoughts. And Aaron, since you're at the table and Dustin usually goes first, I will give you your final thoughts. And you can tell us how much fun you had just hanging out with the boys, having a few beers, because that's ba- the, basically what we're missing from Dustin. I always love beers with the boys. Um, I'm pumped for this fucking rain to stop and for summer to really begin. I'm, I'm ready for the summer of Lund. Oh, hell yeah. I'm just going to go home and download all of Kate Bush's hits. Uh, what a what a great singer, songwriter. <laughs> what? I've been watching, Who is Kate Bush? I've been watching Stranger Things oh. and she is... The running came up, out of nowhere, yeah. Running up the hill. But yeah. she, here's the thing is, though, I'm going to quickly deviate from that. It's cool that a hit from like the 80s, everyone's like, oh, it's so great. If it was that great, why wasn't it a huge hit in the 80s? Nostalgia. It was ahead of its time. Yeah. yeah. It is a, it's a good song, but I... <laughs> That's it? Oh, yeah, that's all. That's well, that all. was very Dustin-like. I don't think so. Dustin wouldn't, you know, who Kate Bush no, was. No, but I mean, <laughs> he just told you told us something that you're going to do that I don't think anyone cares about. 
I care. And Kate Bush cares. So how dare she you? Does. Kate Bush probably listened to this podcast. Go ahead, Kevin. I'm just really excited to observe the summer of Lund uh, and hopefully be part of some of it mm-hmm. uh, starting tonight. And uh, yeah, just, just looking forward to the weekly updates that I hope he gives me. Yeah. Well, if not, I will, because of course, summer of Ted or summer of Lund, just like summer of Ted, it's a state of mind. It's for everyone. It's where you're thinking, oh, I could go out for beers or I could go golfing, but I've got some laundry to fold. Well, that laundry can fucking wait because it's the summer of Lund. Man, I just folded right? like three months worth of laundry. This <laughs> oh, week, he's so good I'm to go. Set. I'm not folding You're taking laundry. this serious. You're, oh, yeah. you're planning ahead. My laundry game is up to date now, so I am set. So that's what I won't be doing is folding any laundry. Yeah, I need to, but I won't be doing it either. And you know that for a fact. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen your pile. Yeah. You got a clean pile and a dirty pile. That's all you need. Speaking of dirty piles, Andrew, thank you for, for being <laughs> here tonight. <laughs> Did we get the check from him yet? Uh, uh, no, thank you. You know, a lonely night on the couch, but again, great to be back. Most of the gang back anyways. I hope you had fun too. I'm guessing you somewhat missed being here just like the rest of us. I missed you guys a little bit. Um, it's definitely lonely on the couch, but that's okay. Aaron's, well, maybe she'll be no, back. Dustin I don't know. will be on the couch next time. Oh, okay. I don't like having to sit up straight, yeah. so I'm back on the couch. All right, back on the couch. Wait couch for you next gang. time. Well, with that, <laughs> what the hell was that? It 1990. Like you, have to, you have to forget. Snap her Just remember, people, it might have sounded... The sound of what people are going to hear versus seeing you do that oh, thing I with your fingers, you. it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. 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 This, uh, hey. Oh, boy. Okay. This is a perfect place to end. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, especially if you're tuning in after this long hiatus. We really appreciate it. Uh, not surprised if we maybe lost some relevance since we didn't have a ton to begin with. But uh, great to be back. Thank you, everyone. Uh, again, one more time, thank you to the four of you for being here. Uh, Dustin, hopefully back with us next time. Uh, we can rag on them all we want. But I guess uh, being a good father and husband is not the worst thing in the world you can do. So on behalf of Andrew Russell, Kevin Walsh, Ryan Lund, and at the big table, Aaron. Yeah, that's it. Bye.